I have some maybe um, basically starting with I think it was the meeting minutes. I would agree with the meeting minutes from the previous uh, meeting on the date from me. It's from um, August 9th. August 9th. Outside at Mr. Correct, yes. Uh, I saw the email it was it said page one of two, but I only saw one page in the email. Oh really? So was it two pages or just yeah, one? the second page was about the special town meeting about the um, vote. I've okay. got an extra so second page that's one. Would you have what, meeting minutes? Uh, yeah, meeting no, minutes. I don't have that. I just found one in the in my email. email. Could be operator error on my part. No, I didn't get it either. You didn't get it either. No, it didn't come on the in the email packet. I just checked my email. I'll I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of August 9th. Yes. Second. I read it before the meeting. Second on that. One second. Second. Any comments to it? Next is that. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 And formality, you ask any opposed? Any opposed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when a, when a motion is made, it gets seconded, then it's we open for a little bit of discussion, and everybody's done beating it up. Yeah, any opposed? Okay. <clears throat> uh, as Mike recommended, the next order of business would be to uh, create the structure for the finance, the restructuring finance committee for chairman and a vice chair. Um, if I might suggest that uh, present members should stay. If they're interested or not, but we know, so we know. So, yeah. so I'll stop by saying that I, I, I am not interested in being, being the chairman on the fund. Okay. I, I don't have the time. Okay. That makes sense. No problem. In case someone's going to say, oh, I need to nominate me. I'm not a big mic. Where's Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Mike is <laughs> in the room. <laughs> That's not going to fly anymore. Yeah, that's true. So just to back up, uh, what is there? Is there any current offices? Uh, well, basically, I'm the interim. He's the okay. vice chair. He's the vice chair from Heather from gotcha. the meetings of the summer. I don't know the date, but that I've just been taking over everything I can for. Absolutely. Okay. Um, just, just. Uh, yeah, because I know we were kind of broken up, and it was right. a strange time. We get to be the people and such. And and the <clears throat> summer, as a senior member, I was advising our recording clerk. And hey, till we get a chairman, make sure we post the meeting for tonight. Reach out. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Again, all that will fall on chairman. The chairman. Correct. I'm interested in being the chairman. Um, on the He's on the hook. He's on the hook. Slip off. Go right ahead. That's fine. I mean, good to you guys a little bit work me through a few areas. I'm sure I'll have, but. I make, I make a motion to nominate uh, uh, Mike Jones as uh, FinCom chairman for this coming year. Right, second. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Congratulations, Mike. Congratulations. And, um, Next now one. for uh, Next the vice chair, are there any members that are interested in supporting that? This is a trick question. You better tell them why. Uh, yes, I have been made aware due to uh, my focus, my lack of focus. I actually have a Cancun trip that is supposed to be 11 to like 19. So someone will have to read the motion. <laughs> Tell me to. Tell me, so someone will have to read the motion. I was meeting with her, she was like the 19th, and I'm like, oh no. 17, but yeah. Yes, yeah, so, 17. I don't get back to so someone's going to have to do that too. So, so kind of, well, 
Anybody gonna step up and uh, yeah, I mean, if there's a vice chair, the vice chair, chair could do so as well. For sure. I'm happy to nominate Mike for that. <laughs> I, I mean, look, look I, I'm just here's the IT guy right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I had to pick somebody, it would be, be nice. Sure. So, <laughs> I mean, he, if he's going to do it, would be appreciated. If he's going to do it most of the time, but he's definitely going to need help, and you've already done it before. All right, Gene. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Again. I'll <laughs> 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 So something's got to be not. I don't know. Man, we're good. Is Cameron in the vice chair or just for this the special? Oh, I think it's probably. Right. We, can, we, can, we can throw it out again when Jack's here. Anybody get our decision? When the board's full. Yeah, when the board's full. When the board's full. I mean, when the board's full. Yeah. We can do that. We just put it on the agenda and take care of it. You said a lot. I did. I did. Yeah. Any comments to that? All in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 great. Any opposed? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Monty. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the next order of business is to go through the <clears throat> the different aspects of the town meeting and warrant. Um, we can start with basically Article 1. Um, working from the spreadsheet, uh, Article 1 is uh, bills from the prior year. We have uh, three different bills $250 from the mosquito flyer, $7,372 for the legal bills from the previous year, and $491 in. Okay, my first question is why we build from the front here? I already saw the explanation for, for the mosquito control that somehow fell through the cracks. That's that's cheap money. The next one, five grand for, for what? What's it for? It's actually seven grand. Yeah, seven thousand uh, three hundred seventy-two dollars. So this number five thousand. You know? Yeah, they're placeholders. So 7,000, those are legal bills from April and May for the end of the year for the trust property and anything related to um, the annual town meeting. So they would get billed, basically the bill sort of quarterly for our legal bills. So those are the bills from that time. Mm -hmm. I did. I did forward you my all the uh, supporting the detail. I think it on the laptop uh, for the bills. Oh, I don't have that list. Mm -hmm. that, that was in that email. I can bring it out on the laptop next time. Yeah, actually, we have one for you. We should have one for you. Actually, <laughs> yeah, bless you. Me <laughs> too. Um, and just one of the suggest suggestion too, just because you guys can get that. That the, the correspondent go the correspondence goes to the um, email groups so that um, Gene gets a copy as well so that if there's copies that need to be printed or that way she could even be able to pull it up and be able to answer uh, or at least give the information if somebody wants to. Okay. 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 And it's Global Montello oil bill, which I actually buy a fuel oil from for heating or the fuel. That's heating oil. It's heating oil? Yeah. The reason why it's. I'm looking that up for you. That's in one of these emails. Well, I, Mike, just so that you know, yeah. what I'm doing is making sure that whoever's going to. At, at a town meeting, explain an article. Mm -hmm. yeah, we know exactly what we're voting on, and then right. somebody gets up and says, What was that bill for? 100%. Yeah, no, we can't wash it off now. Uh, a little crazy. Then we, we, our credibility goes way right down. Yeah, right. Yeah. Understood. Just a question on the oil bill. Do we, do we do like a bulk buy for all of the town? Yeah. And is it like, do we? Do a cap price? Do we negotiate that during the <coughs> or do we do market rate? What's our policy? 
Alan um, is part of a consortium that bid fuel together. Okay. I think it's Norfolk, the, the Norfolk towns. It's not because we, we actually looked a couple years ago at switching to the closer one and the pricing wasn't as good. So, so we do we have a competitive yes. I'm trying to think that one. Oh, here it is. Here's Bill. It's Murphy Hesse. All right, so this is. $491 bill came in on July 8th for delivery of 222 gallons from May 24th. Which may be easy not. Just a question. Uh, Who's going to do the uh, print up the articles? I'm going to do it. So we're not ready. Yeah, sure. I think we talked about it today. Yeah, Typically, in the past, I used to make them for a while. I made the motions, and then I wrote the explanations, and then Mike sort of took it over for the last year or so. So um, I'll do it again for this one. The next one just says smooth this one. Yeah, I know if we're going to be using a projector or not for the special town meeting but we used to put them off on the screen I'm not sure if we're gonna but we'll sort that out later i'd like to do one packet of all of them together so, so you'll we'll, have the motions yes the we'll have the printouts that night and i'll also be doing them before but you if there's i usually write a little blip about what it is but if you yeah. don't want to do that no you, you can okay. write it right. mm -hmm. i don't want to put anybody's words in it yeah. <laughs> usually, that's why I asked. Usually, the finance committee, any recommendation that the finance committee makes, we write the, the one. And we write the one, so we know the reason. Uh, the motion, the uh, motion sometimes. Okay. But in order to write the motion, you've got to have the correct information. information. And being that this is a bill from May, it just didn't get built until happening. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, it happens. Okay. It is. Well, they can actually submit them, you know, within the first 15 days of the, and this one was July 8th, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. Can you get up, can you get up to them, what, 15 days? Yeah. Did the July? I think it was a holiday weekend. Sure. <clears throat> well, our one, is everyone satisfied? Because we don't have to comment. Yeah. I'll make a motion to support uh, Article. We have a second. Okay. Now we'll do a comment process. So all in favor? All right. All right. All right. Aye. Any opposed? Nothing no. Kevin uh, doesn't necessarily vote unless there's a tie break. You yes. okay. Perfect. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So but I believe you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. take your discretion. Sure. But if you have it at the beginning of each meeting, that you know that we're going to be voting on stuff, you make a statement saying that the chairman reserves a right to vote. Okay, that's just the time. That's the time. Okay, right. Then it doesn't look like you just sandbag. I got you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so Article 2, uh, moving on, is it's like a, a series of salaries, so there's only one salary on that, $2,000. It's a town hall service salary for $7,000. Police department salary for $22,000. Fire department full time wage change for $17,500. Building inspector salary for $2,500. Highway construction and maintenance salaries for $12,000. Highway supervisor salary, $2,100. Council on aging and salaries. Is twenty five hundred and the library salary is twenty five thousand, twenty five hundred dollars. Excuse me. <clears throat> so all of this is being voted on as well. Yeah. So we'll read them. It'll say we have to specify which line item. So for this article, so in our budget we have a line that says reserve for negotiations. This year is our was our third year of our contracts. So please. <coughs> Rates reflect the amounts that we now need to transfer from salary negotiations into those individual lines. 
Um, we've settled three out of four of our contracts. We only have one outstanding, so we will do some transfers again in May to catch the rest. These are um, estimates. They will come down slightly once I do the actual hours out. This is a max out estimate, right? so they'll come down. Um, but this is still within that 75 that we had, but this is 71 actually. Um, so this is from uh, being held from, from contract negotiation. Right, and anyone else that was not in a contract, the board awarded a 2% uh, cost of living adjustment to, so uh, part-time or non-contractual employees. But did you say these numbers are still excellent? Yeah, they're, they're high. So right now, um, I've taken the budget numbers, but we're going to go down and make sure they're related to their hourly numbers, actually through payroll. So, yeah, they're going to, they're, I'm going to be it's too late. They, no, they're going to come down once they do the calculations, because right, these are based off the budget, which are yeah. concept yeah. in the right. Our new HR person is running them today for me so we can get the actuals. Because sometimes there's retro pay, sometimes there's stipends, sometimes there's additional overtime that needs to go in. But I should say, with the exception of the highway surveyor, uh, that is the only one on here that's just one person. I was going to ask, like, can we go through each one and tell me how many people? Sure, are yeah, absolutely. I have that right here. Um, everyone else is a group of people within a line. Yeah, that would be great. So I'll just start zoning. So for the zoning, let's see, zoning board salary. Right here. I've got the zoning enforcer. I've got administrative assistant to zoning. So, I mean, theoretically, once I take a better look at it, it's going to be closer to $1,200. So I mean, once I take a peek at it, that's, that'll come down. Um, town hall services, that's going to be um, it's actually kind of a, uh, it's a kind of a hodgepodge, but it's um, it's going to be executive assistant over here. It's going to be the HR person here. It's going to be any part time. So downstairs in the clerk's office. So this would have let's do an account. This has got one, two, three, four, five people in it right now. And then they will have a couple more because there's a couple of these employees that are in the town hall union that hasn't settled yet, so they'll be later in the year. Uh, police department, that's all of them, minus the chief and the administrative system. Okay, so 14. 14. Yeah, 14. Um, fire department, six and a half plus call. Um, building inspector, that's actually all the inspectors um, minus the uh, the admin that's in the town hall. It's confusing, but it's what it is. Um, a council on aging, that's bus drivers, um, outreach worker, any other part, their part time admin once rehired. That would be in that line. And then library salaries are the children's librarian and any part time library aides. So that's a total of $70,100 according to my stone tablet. <laughs> <laughs> your abacus, you added it up on your abacus. At, yes. At the uh, annual town meeting, we appropriated seventy-five thousand <laughs> finance committee reserve fund for negotiating. Yes. So that leaves us uh, just under five million left. Yeah, yes. and, and I think that number will come down a little bit, so there'll be a little bit more, and that should be, in theory, if the town hall union did settle for two percent, um, ten thousand dollars or so would be adequate. Thank you. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused. Okay. Uh, so you have you have actual. Why are we transferring the larger amount so to the department? We have to. We pay them from individual from these salary lines. So we budgeted the set. We're basically, just moving the money. It's authorization that coming to move the money, or I can wait until the last 90 days of the fiscal year to do it. But rather than run the risk of deficit spending, we're just moving it now. Contracts are signed, pullers are approved. This is so in theory, you're moving more money than you need. Well, you... my plan is not to. My plan is to get the actuals and then change these numbers to be in the motion to the actual numbers that we need. Okay. And then where will that money go after you? It just stays there in that line for reserve until so we need it for the rest of the contracts. So, believe me, they'll want to know how much is left, and that's so in fact, we will be moving the actual now. 
Yes. Yeah, exactly. This is just, um, you know, we just certified free cash yesterday and we're just getting, you know, my hope is that we would settle all the contracts by town meeting, but that isn't the case. Doesn't seem to be the case. And so here we are. You, you could certify what's free cash? 753. 750. It, it's on this page. It is. It's five hundred thousand dollars return from expenditures and the rest from uh, revenue. Um, okay. Um, sorry. Any questions on that? I don't have any additional questions. Is anybody else? Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve Article Two. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? What do I say there? I say in the approval. Of course, they approve. Okay, article two is approved. Okay, moving to article three. Uh, this is our stabilization account. It says uh, move two hundred and fifty thousand dollars into free cash. Yes. So as I just mentioned. We just certified yesterday, 753. Um, so we're recommending moving $250,000. The board actually hasn't met yet to um, recommend amounts. Um, there has been some discussion about doing road work in the spring. Um, just want to bring your attention to this other sheet that looks like this. Uh, so, if you may recall, we have a long range financial plan, and in that long range financial plan, um, you want to save 5% of our, our operating budget in stabilization and 3% in CapEx. Okay? And so, the target, so looking based on FY22, the target for stabilization is a little over that, over a million. We currently have 1.18 million, which is amazing, right? And then, so we're currently over by 100,000. After SEM, if we add this 250, we'll be at 1.4, and we'll be up about 350, which is great, okay? Uh, CapEx, which is the next one where the recommendation is $100,000. I know the next logical question is, why only $100,000? It's because there is a general bylaw that the town has passed that says that we are capped at $100,000. So I we need to change that in the spring, okay? Because this would be a perfect time to put some of that money aside uh, in CapEx and basically hit our target. We could have done that here. We can't because of our bylaw. So um, that's what it's for. I mean, so, someone did ask me, why would we put the money in stabilization? But I, the goal would be once we had a, a better understanding of where we are with ARPA funds and what we want to do for the spring, we basically use this money in the spring for whatever work project it is. So basically sticking it aside. We'll have to come back to town meeting, take it out again with two thirds, but at least it's been put aside for that. So what was the rationale around only having 100,000 in CapEx? It's from 2004. You'd have to go back in time. And it was any of Mike, were you here? Yeah, at the time, hundred thousand dollars was uh, a lot of money. Was a lot of money. <laughs> at the time, that was out of reach. Got it. Got it. Simple as that. Mendon's always been on, uh, on the short end. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm amazed that we we have seven hundred, basically seven hundred fifty thousand dollars turned back. Mm -hmm. It's been a long. Well, keep in mind we regionalized dispatch. That's a big piece of it. We, you know, we didn't spend as much as we were out of the pandemic. You know, so basically, you can't count on. I mean, it's, it's nice to have, but that's you know. Right. So there's no guarantee that's going to be there next year or right. the year after. So mm -hmm. the smart thing to do is to put it in the bank. I say you don't do it in can, which is about putting in stabilization. Right. And, if you're going to spend it, spend it on a one time expense, not on a three year expense. It's usually going to be a little thoughtful. 
the digital one stabilization. One five years, years off the seat. Love to hear that. You, you burned it in the microwave. Yes, yeah, right. So stabilization is one time thing, and capex is something. That well, capex is twenty over twenty five thousand, something that I like expect to see over five years. So you know, it could be a project, it could be a piece of equipment, but we never, <clears throat> we we don't have a reoccurring. I like, we don't currently fund reoccurring replacement of our machinery. We, we do for we do now for thank God for fire and we are for police, but not for highway or anything. We've never done anything there, so we need to work on that. And that's what we go. We've never had enough money. Right. right. The tax base is is low. Well. Again, you know, thirty years ago there was what over six thousand people today, approximately seven. Seven. Four. Cut that in half. Yeah. Right. Thirty years ago, was, you know, and twenty years before that, there was like fifteen hundred. And the businesses that support the more. Yeah. Right. So I'm recommending two fifty, um, and capex at a hundred, and OPEB at twenty five thousand, which are my typical numbers. I mean, I think the interesting what you want to know here is how much free cash does that leave us after we do this, and the answer is. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> it's uh, 350000 approximately? No. Wait. No, because there's other articles on here. Well, <laughs> pack. We, didn't, we didn't get to them. <laughs> so, so right now, it's right now. 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 It's right the long range financial plan was established again before my time. Typically, in my experience, you want to have 10 or 12 percent of your operating budget be your reserve. So I think that five is super low um, for any time that I've ever worked it. I mean, I'm glad we finally hit five, but um, I've never seen it this low at any place that I've worked. Well, I think five was the minimum to keep our rating. Yeah. So that's why our time was five again. That's what I'm saying. Lot of money. Related to get done. We could probably start to. Build that up a little bit. Then it does affect the bond rating. It does. If you go under the five, it, it affects our bond rating, so it will affect. So these targets are five. Yeah, there. Five for civilization, three for capital. What is OPEB? OPEB is the uh, other post post employment benefits. It's that six million dollar unfunded liability we have hanging over our heads that again affects our bond rating if we're not putting money towards it. We'll never actually fund it. Um, no one actually will, no municipality will, but when we have these bond rating meetings, they look to see that we are making a good faith effort towards right. paying it. And so every fall when we have the funds available, we put some money towards it. Um, so I just, I will add this. Once we do all this stuff with FinCom on this page today, um, I've left about $180,000. Not touch, just floating there. Okay. <laughs> Certainly, FinCom could recommend to take all of that right now and stick it in stabilization. That's your prerogative to do so. The board, you can, I can bring that back to the board since the money's not really here. So next week, I could bring it back and say we want to put all of it in. That's your call. I, I left it out because one, we don't know what's going to happen the rest of this year, and two, I legitimately think we're going to have a terrible winter. I know I shouldn't say it out loud, and just thinking about snow and ice, but. It's any number there is I'm happy with as long as it's 250 and up. So, you might, do you want to? Uh, the, the, the nice part about leaving the 180 there until uh, maybe the, the annual time meeting, we can always transfer more to stabilization. To get money out of stabilization requires a different vote. Right, two thirds or just a and, and a lot more discussion. Whereas if we have 180 and we need 100 of it, for snow and ice, it's an easier transfer, saying it's coming from free cash, and then we can move the 50 into stabilization if we don't need it. No matter what, it's going to go back to town. We can't just spend the money. Right, it's going to go to town meeting. It's going to be voted on by right. people, whether it's a free, sitting there in free cash. It makes, as he, as the selectman said, it makes it easier to, to take out. It's not in stabilization. It's not in stabilization. I, but I'm a believer in it. It's the people's money, put it in the bank, and make sure we, it's what we're going to spend it on worth the uh, <clears throat> effort to get it out. 
Considering we've just kind of jumped ahead a couple of sorry. articles. No, it's fine. Why don't we revisit that at the end of yeah. this and have a discussion yeah. once we've gone through everything and we're all on the same page? Right. So I, I say we pass over stabilization right now and move to Article 4 and talk about the CapEx. And sorry, we'll get that. The CapEx adds we will all know now is capped at $100,000, moving $100,000 from the high free cash into CapEx. I make a motion to approve Article uh, 4 as presented. This is a second. Second. Just had a question of CapEx. What is the to move money out of CapEx? Is that a that, that's not two thirds, right? The whole? I can't. I actually think it is two thirds because it's, I think it's a form of a stabilization account. So, so it's no, no, different. Anyway. Well, free cash is, is a simple. No, term. no, capex. Yeah, capex. Yeah, capex stabilization. Well, right. It's basically we could be paying for equipment out of stabilization and not have a separate capital equipment account, but we have one, so. So you would go to, you would go to the capital uh, <clears throat> capex account first. Well, and generally, we'll go to the capital planning committee, which we don't have. <laughs> which is, I think I'm the, the sole survivor. <laughs> and there's no process. There's no, and, you know, quite frankly, when we did have a few members, we just got, well, no, I should, we weren't there just there was nothing. It, there was no process. Well, it's hard to do anything when there's no money to spend. And that's well, there's no process. Yeah. I mean, at least you should come to us. Yeah, you know, and discuss it. Oh, no, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Right, and, and we started to get a process, but if anybody wants to volunteer, I think one of the select board members should be yeah. on that. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I think well, there's a lot I'm of I'm discussing it. Is it even, is it a committee that is, that is required? It's a committee that we have adopted right. that exists in our bylaw. That so, says that we will. Sure, so, so right. So, and 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 we can. You know, we've always been very difficult at, at, at getting no members seats. into it. Like I said, there was only a few of you. That again, there's no process. Is it something that's just there that, that looks fun and is not, and we just get rid of it as, as everything's going to pass through the finance committee anyway? And I, I don't, I don't, I just don't know that it's a necessary, an extra necessary committee, but. Not for conversation. Sorry, I'm well, like, but again, that should that would be discussed at a selection that we agree. No, no, but, but uh, again, we're the finance committee. We're here to advise the select them on the issues, and that relates to my issue. And if you look at the bylaws, which I have a copy right here, and anything that involves this expenditure of money, this has got to come to us, and we. Give our opinion and recommendation to the board of selectmen and the taxpayer. So just to, to, I think there's a lot of value to the capital committee. And yeah. the number one value is planning. There's no planning for capital equipment. It's time. Five year, ten year plan. It's not, there's no plan. It's just right. that hard. No, no, Every year we go through this, you know, it, and I think there's a lot of value to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it should be, uh, unfortunately, it's never been something like that. I, I, I would tend to agree because it, it appears that we get different. Departments coming in saying, I need this, I need Last that, I need this, I need that. And, and I'm sure they're all needs that as a town we have, but there's no kind of overlook of prioritization across and planning and seeing kind of what all this is going to meeting with each of those departments is on a regular basis and putting together a plan so that we're saving money to prioritize. I, I would say that there's some use. Yeah, again, that. don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there's not right. a need for it, right. just saying it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't do it. The existence of the committee doesn't necessarily it, require the existence of the account. We're just. We're, we're just. It, we just. We put money into it. There's, we get. We get an exciting. We get. We get people excited. It seems like every four or five years or so, it starts to get some traction, and then it just falls back into, into the gutter. And, and it's a, no, nobody's fault. I just. I don't know where. How do we get some more excited about it? And, and if it, if we're not, if it's just going to continue to do that. Do we just move that back here between board select and finance committee? Right. And, and, and still do it, but not have this other entity that needs to do it. Will that that those duties will now fall 
maybe we have a joint meeting every year that we collaborate about what the needs are going to be, have everybody updated, have it being a moving yes. function, just on another committee that we're trying to, we, you know, I gotta get off the soapbox because it's. It, I'm just gonna. It's gonna. So we have these committees that we we have a hard time filling, and we get a bunch of people excited about it, and everybody gets together to fill these committees back up. Even FinCom here, um, you know, we've even seen it at, at, at a three member board of selectmen that we're trying to fill. Now we're gonna try to fill it with five, but that's a whole other story. So now it just continues that we we just run into this where we get some volunteers and we get people really excited about things, and then all of a sudden. And, and I, I, I feel we can talk with the people that are already excited. About what we're going to be talking about is we're not, we're not Boston. We're not, we're, we don't have a population of 50,000 people. Right. We don't have a huge right. tax base. We're not Milford where they got millions of dollars and they, and where it's possible to plan. So it gets frustrating trying to plan. So we don't have any money. I, I have a question. I think that's all we can plan. I have a question. Is it something, and I don't know if the schedules and things of that nature, isn't it something that the finance committee could create a special meeting for? So it's twice a year we just meet, we meet with the fire heads, yeah. go over their needs, we discuss them with them, and then we make a recommendation, and that's just the end of it? Yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying I'm not saying anything against yours, but I just didn't see it. <laughs> that's the way it used to be. Yeah. Integrated. Integrated. Just, just said you will call a meeting on, on February 5th. I, I don't know. And just have that all the department has to be present for it and bring their, you know, future plans for that year come to what they're going to need for allocations. Yeah, not even the one that's more than one year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you need. I think you need that, uh, what they need in five years. Oh, no. No. I, I, I'm not saying. I'm just saying the intermediate. Yeah, I think like, okay, that truck is good, not going to make it more than three more years. We have to have a conversation about the fact that that truck is going to be seven thousand dollars to repair, so or replace. And that's why you're a chimney. <laughs> uh, no, I'm also I, I think it would help to have a select board member on the, during that time. Yeah. We could. We could address that. Because yeah. sometimes you guys have some inside information. Yeah, okay. well, and, and I think that, yeah, I mean, I would definitely come. Uh, I, I enjoyed the FinCom with the whole thing. So, so you used to hand out candy. Yeah, yeah but then we have to pay for it. Yeah. No, we always get money. So, there's a line. You know, the content. Oh, what's oh. 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 this? Sorry, go ahead. We'll be here. That's fine. Just ordered my kids' dinner from here. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I was on the way back when I started on the thing in 2000. Mm -hmm. The only thing that bothered me about it was there was no structure. And this was only that capital for me. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like you went to the meeting and said, okay, this is, this is our plan. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do. At this meeting, we're going to do this. It was like, okay, has anybody heard from such and such? Do we do this yet? Do, it, there was no structure, and I'm not. And I think we're hearing this, that it still yeah. was like. Nobody, oh, we were nobody knew what to do. It's almost like you have to have some sort of experience on a capital planning committee. Well, to put no, them I, I think we should probably move on. Probably. Yeah, but I think, again, for a future conversation, maybe. Yeah. The, or it's not going to even be. I've made a note that we can discuss this. Sure. And, and, I mean, Doing stuff like this is we can yeah because this, this is well within my capabilities and the fleet as it is now so I understand all this and we can do this. Seems like a lot of synergy. No, I, I knowing where money will go in a year or two and we'll need to deal with it. It'll be obviously help the funding of this month the funding is not where it's all going to be going. Um, uh, yeah, and all those in favor have a motion on moving the hundred thousand dollars into the capex fund that currently has. Um, two uh, two hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars into it. I make a motion to uh, support Article Four as presented. Is there a second? We did that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Okay, so moving on to Article uh, Five, OPEP. Uh, $25,000 from free cash, as we talked about earlier. This is time of funding. Uh, I'm not even sure you describe it better than that. Yeah, it's, it's towards our unfunded liability for all of the 
employees that we've had and their families over the years, potentially. Motion to I'll make a motion to accept Article 5 and before Article 5 is presented. Have we, uh, have we talked about as part of the salary negotiations and the contract negotiations? I know there was some discussion around health care costs and health care costs for uh, employees or and, and or their families that are continuing on at 100% versus um, kind of what the uh, What's happening out there in, in the private space? Is there any further discussion about that? So we just completed negotiations. Um, we didn't make any health insurance changes or concessions this time. So employees are still at seventy-five twenty-five, and we pay a hundred percent of their deductible. And the reason that we do that is because when we went to a high deductible plan five years ago, now we're able to basically take a 12% increase and reduce it to a negative six. So we've been fully funding our own deductible now, basically waging whether or not we'd have claims or not. Uh, I think what you're referring to is the, the retiree coverage that we pay, which is at also at 75, 25 for people who are before that retirement piece. So there's a number of employees and their spouses or ex-spouses right. who we are paying 75% of the coverage for that we are not required to. And that's not actually something that we need to negotiate. That's a decision that we can actually just make. It's not a bar, it's a it's not a subject of bargaining. So yeah. and is that leading to this line item? To the, is that where some of that certainly, certainly. Yes. I mean that is it's certainly this year when we were in a real tight situation with the budget. It was right on my list of easy things for us to do. Um, not easy, of course, in the sense that it's going to have a dramatic impact on employees, but easy in the sense that it's a very generous thing for us to continue to do. It's a practice that I don't think that we can afford to continue. And so I think we will take a look at it. Hopefully in the past, previous boards didn't have much of an appetite for it because it is such a sensitive issue with employees, certainly ones who've worked here for a long time. So do we know what the total dollar amount of that is? I do, but I don't have it off the top of my head. I had done an analysis two budget seasons ago on it. It's a lot. I think it's something that the town should look at. I'm not saying that we should do something, but I think it's something that we should evaluate. I agree. Obviously. If we could do something, I would say we would start with some sort of step down. <laughs> not just slam the phrase. Well, it could be as simple as passing a policy that's like only applies to immediate family members and not ex-spouses and their kids and et cetera. Well, yeah, that should probably be easy. It's not actually because really? yes. So okay, anyway, it's not a Yes, it is. There's a lot of nuances in it. But yeah, you know, we I know we have this huge unfunded gap, but you know, anything that we can do to help close it, I know mean, it's well, yeah, she said it was six million. I don't know how yeah. fast it's estimated. So you're not They're wrong. actually doing it right now. They're it. doing the um the OPEP valuation right now, the finance director and the mm -hmm. HR person with the auto So that's a note for, for future conversation. Um do I have a second on uh article five? Second. All those in favor? All right. Article five is approved. Article six, uh, regular substance abuse program, $5,200 from free cash. This is a grant program that the police department puts forward every year. This is the matching component. If, I don't know if the new moderator is gonna be doing the consent calendar or not, but this would be one of the things that usually goes into consent. So. so it's a matching grant program? Yes, it's one of Dave's grants. Regional substance use. I'll make a motion to uh, support the whole effect as explained. Good second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 6. Article 7, please revolving account. Zero dollar value. So 
this is on here, these seven and eight are together. Seven is the vote to establish the account and eight is the, the vote to establish the limit. Um, this is an account that the police department is requesting in order to put aside money from details, specifically when a vehicle is requested and involved in order to put that money towards repair of those vehicles in this revolving account. And the 15,000, who come up with that figure? That's the limit. That's Dave's request. That's Dave, that's yeah. the chief request. Was that his original request or was he talking about? Um, well, that's when that's, that's it. I guess, I, what is the purpose of the image? <laughs> He wants to be able to effectively charge a fee for this when he so when we do a detail, let's say to a private business and they also request a cruiser in addition to an officer, we're not we haven't been charging an additional amount for the cruiser. And the, in theory, there's wear and tear related to the use of those vehicles. And so this money would go specifically to that count for the vehicles. The fee would be basically the fee would go right into it rather than come back into the charge. So I agree with the fee. But what's the advantage of the recall? So that because a designated funding source for repairs for those vehicles. So basically, when something went down, you had the option to use this account to repair it. But we'd have to use that account. We'd have to use that account. Well, yeah, we're not going to take it. We're not going to go send a bill. We're not going to just say, I don't know what you got. I apologize. Unless it was zero. We assume we have something in the budget to repair. Right. And no, we. What we actually do now, if there's a vehicle accident, is we have to come up with the money, obviously, for the deductible, just like anybody else. And sometimes the question becomes, who pays that and where does it come from? Oh, and if we're bringing the fees specifically related to one department's vehicles right. that are for the repair of that vehicle, it's just a clearer path to make sure that just money gets back to those vehicles. On, on what it was right. So it's not just asking, it's repair, maybe. Yeah, right. So it could be the purchase eventually of another vehicle. If so one call, let's just say there's a car that they keep on. Right, just for this purpose, that it would be for the maintenance of that vehicle. So, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I don't see the big advantage here. It's really you're taking money that could be going to free cash again. Yes. I, I, yeah, it looks like somebody can tell me the big advantage. I don't, I, don't know. I think it gives them the freedom to uh, pay for his expenses. If he's charging fees for it, no, I and agree with fees. And that, Fee goes into that account, and that is guaranteed to be spent on what he charges the fee for. So it goes into it goes into the general account. It goes, and there's no guarantee that it'll get it back. It'll get it back when he needs it. I agree with saying. I kind of see what you're saying too. I just agree with what, when when he presented it. I I agree with it based upon how it was presented to me. But there's also a fair statement that. Yeah, I guess it just could go to free cash, uh, but right, it's really just another fifteen thousand making it It's the same, same, it's same, it's same idea we we have with clock department. Oh no, I I can I, I can get it. I'm 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 so is there, I guess, so is there a line item for the police department for repair, I'm assuming, for vehicles? Yeah, there's a- Maintenance there's, for repair for vehicles. Right. So why it, doesn't it just go over there? We, well, we lease all of the vehicles in the fleet, and so we have a service contract in place. And so unless there's some sort of outrageous amount of repair for something, it's basically covered in a contract and I can pay those bills from that pay out. We're not bringing money in for that. And that would be wear and tear based upon work for Mended. This would be, the idea is this is using our stuff somewhere else. We're paying for a person, but they're getting the car for free, essentially. I don't know how much wear and tear there actually is based upon these details. I don't know how often it would be used. I don't know, but it's something that he thinks he needs. And so this is a fee, so say someone needs a detail for some event or something, right? And there's a fee to send a police officer to that. Yes. And we're charging them for the officer's time. And 
the officers are walking, they're, they're driving there. This is the car. Patrol right. car. No. Well, there's, that's there's the, the confusion. Right. Yeah. right. Maybe that's the confusion. That's they're want... driving their own car to the detail. If you want a police, so this isn't like citizen so treatment, for example. No, no, no. It's not like a school resource officer. The car is parked and they're there. It's like somebody in the middle of the street directing traffic when there's a telephone. That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. Yes. So, and it's not necessarily that we bring a cruiser to those details, unless it's something that's an emergency and the person, the, the police officer is already on duty and they run up there to do the detail. Right. This is uh, some people. We're on the streets digging a hole. To fix the water main and we we hide it, but we also we want the cruiser there for the lights so that it's a, a better presence than or even an event. Uh, Imperial had used to have the, the shows and he would request us. They would be charged. Now the vehicle, if they requested the vehicle before, we didn't charge for it. Now we're charging for the vehicle. So the cost of the vehicle to go there is what goes in this count, not the cost of the employee. Um, I don't know if that clears it up. So basically, he's generating new revenue to to look to pay for his cruises. Maintenance or anything like that. Maybe to physical. He could even, like I said, be used for under the Right. Or keeping one longer and fixing it up. That we wouldn't normally keep on. That we would use specifically, maybe just for details, not one of the brand new lease vehicles that's being utilized. Right. I can think of an example of when we. The truck, for instance. When we're, well, we're supposed to trade in the vehicles and the value was $5,000. Instead, we could buy that out for $5,000 and keep it just. I mean, think, think of something like that. I mean, it's possible. I guess the question is the fee for business, the fee for use, and where are other fees for use for the town go? Do they stay in the, the those department budgets or do they go into the general fund? Depends. It's kind of a mismatch. <laughs> you have, like, for instance, Fees for the parks, for the beach and the parks, they have it. They have it where they go out to purchase the food or what have you. Maybe it's at the beach. They use the some. some of the yeah, things. so that, I get a good explanation on that one. It totally makes sense. I, I sort of did advantage this from here. I know. Well, I'll make a motion to support me. Uh, just take a vote. Yeah, just take a vote. Well, I'll make a motion to support uh, the uh, article seven and eight. Article, uh, yeah, article seven to establish it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, I have questions on the months, but uh, I, I think it's a uh, personal. I think it's a good idea. I'll throw a motion to support that out. I think I need more information before I can vote on that to understand kind of. Exactly what the minds would be to abstain or nay. Yeah. So, I'm, bring, I'm bringing it so that we can act on it. Right, yes. So then it's just going around. Just, are you going to stand as well? Or well, somebody's got a second first. Oh, I'm sorry. So, right. okay. if it doesn't get second, then it becomes a new point. Okay. I'll, I'll second the account. That, that can be done. You can second, yeah, second. I'll second it. Uh, Comments anymore or all in favor, I guess. Aye. Right. Aye. All in opposed. And then, so two to two. <laughs> so right. This, there's some mistakes when you don't have four. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, go the full board. Yeah. Because right. now, so I mean, uh, on a tie, I don't, I don't think. It's still two to two. In, yeah. him, they're just voting on their yeah, recommendations. Five, we have five members of the school. He shouldn't be voting because he made a statement saying five. Right. He's not going to vote. So the actual vote is two to one. Mm -hmm. Fair. Anyway, so uh, that's right. Okay. So that makes that makes more I know that you, yeah. I know it's fairly big as we asked for to make it. Four hand. Four hand. Four hand. It's still going. It's still an article on the warrant. It'll still be voted on the next time. Right. It's just our uh, recommendations right. against it. The difference is, right, whether your recommendation is, right. and you're going to meet before town meeting, and if you get additional information at that time, or you want the chief to talk to you before then. I think we should do that. Then you can. <laughs> I think we should stop, stop anybody on not knowing all the information. Right. Right. Giving right. a second and third right. hands. Right before. Yeah, um, so we can, we can do that. Yeah. So is that something? By voting on it, yeah. it shows the performance of the police department. That they better come up 
and, and, and speak to the committee. Okay. You know, yep, no, if, you did, if you didn't vote on it, and when we say pass over it, we don't give them the opportunity to come to the county's office. Now, you had mentioned speaking to them prior to, or is that something we can change last minute, or is there a deadline to have a well, so it's, it's a couple options you have are you can have another meeting beforehand, um, which there is definitely time. I have him come in to speak to this article, uh, or you could meet with him the night of the meeting and just right. vote it at that meeting. Right. If you're going to post for 6.30 the night of what you're going to, you can easily ask him to be there at 6.30 and explain it to you. Does, does that make sense to all of us? And then you can decide right then and there. Okay. So let's let's do that. You, you vote in this town. Right. And we'll be so we have to uh, and our next meeting, what is it? Before the meeting? Half hour before the meeting. Yeah. You gotta vote to reopen Article 7. Yeah. And, and have that and, and have that. <laughs> Agree to open it, and then have uh, the proponent speak, and then we decide again. Well, yeah, yeah. And that's something I can do. Reach out to the chief and try to set a meeting while I'm still there. Yeah, I can do all practice of this. Perfect. Okay, so, so that puts a uh, a hold on Article uh, Eight. Yeah, so seven is in May. Article Eight. Article Eight. So not gonna act on. Okay. So, Article 9, uh, birth certificate, $1,000, revert to the house, reserve for the Town clerk recently passed their town clerk certification class for the state, and it says that they will receive $1,000 upon completion of this class. So, she is asking to have that. So, one time, uh, Oh, no, it's every, so every year. Added to a base salary. You get, need to get recertified. It's a one time class. Take it once. I think it's a series of classes over a, a year or so. I don't think it's a simple. I think it's there's some complexity to it. No, I mean, once what, what you have it, you have it. You don't have to like renew it like every five years. As far as I know, I mean, I imagine that there's some refresher courses, but. I don't know because Margaret always had it. She was here for a long time. So every year they can't announce. Yeah. So that's something that next year wouldn't be up for voting because it would just be built into their base. Well, that's a good issue. point. I it's guess started actually into their base a couple of years ago right. and this right. was a given. So basically, we're not good. Yeah, this is just yeah, 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 you got it and on your way. Yes. Not sure this. Okay. So uh, we've done that in the past for previous town clerks. So I'll make a motion to support that. Second. Make it easy for you. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 10. Second voting increase. Twelve thousand dollars from free cash. <clears throat> it grown so big. <laughs> exactly. That we might have the to have a second voting precinct. Yeah. The state has forced us into a second voting precinct. Okay, that's a, that's a which requires a separate voting box, which they don't pay for. Which they don't pay for. <laughs> so it's because of our population size? Yes. That we are mandated to uh, incorporate. They just split the town in half, essentially. Route 16 this way is precinct 2, Route 16 <laughs> that way is precinct 1. That is only two places. No, nope, we're still going to, yeah, we're still going to the same place. It's just two boxes. You'll have to, I think the check in process will remain the same. They'll just write each box to put them. Right? It used to be faster, I think, voter check. I know, right? I mean, <laughs> we should be able to fly through the. There's that one year they're all so sitting on the side. To put the thing in? 12,000 boxes. It is that and a few of the things yeah. that we're having. Maps, precinct yeah. maps that you have to, there's a bunch of rules that came with it. I think, it, I think we missed it by like 200 people or something. It was something silly at the end of it, but we thought we were going to be able to buy way more, but it was 200 people and they were like, nope, you get that second voter box. I'll make a motion to uh, 
support out of 10. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Approved. Same. Article 11. Fire alarms. $16,743 in free cash. Yes. So we have one, two, three, four, five buildings that need new wireless dialers. And they also have yearly monitoring fees. The only question I don't have answered yet is why highway is 10 times the size of the rest of the quotes. Look at you, but you don't know the answer either. So I have a, um, I have a. Unless there's some other upgrades that are being done. Right. Which I, which I, I want to say they are, but don't worry about it. We can get you guys some more information on that. Right. So right now, I assume that this number is correct. Um, I'm just waiting for further clarification. So that is all. There were further problems, I believe, at the high department's department. It doesn't even work right now. Uh, but we can get you further on it. it the, the wireless dialers are so Verizon's pulling all the copper, they're dropping in uh, BIOS and Comcast, which are considered digital. The state fire marshal has pushed that they don't want digital. So everybody's moving to these cell dialers, which are actually. Way, way better than the landlines anyway, because they're constant. So we, I've replaced them in a lot of companies through another vendor. I've replaced them myself, but they become there's you have less false alarms with them. There's less, you know, the testing home line was Yeah, actually, you would probably do that. So yeah, and they start. They're much better. Waiting. So the. Uh, the uh, simple explanation is we're upgrading fire alarms. It's a good explanation. You said the fees for those, uh, the annual mm -hmm. fees, is that something that falls back in the departments or is that something that you're paying for? I'm paying it right now one time and then we'll add it to the budgets for next year. I got you. Okay. So because I know it's a little more expensive than falling itself. The, the fire chief would be there, right? At the meeting. Uh, I, 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 I guess we He's requesting these or he's reviewed these as part of. Yes, he reviewed the highway one and then we expanded it to all of the buildings. Custom alarm is actually who provided the quotes for us. Again, one, one of the reasons why I asked that is. Over the years, people will, will get a walk, a warrant on them, an article on the one and then not show up to explain it. And most of the time we get a half-assed explanation of it. People in the audience want a better detail. And you go, uh, so I, I, I would, if, if I'm going to be the guy talking, you know, to some people, I'm going to say, this is, uh, we're upgrading the fire alarms. Any further explanation, I'll defer to the fire chief. It'll be there, because people will be going, Where's the chief? I want to ask him. At home. So uh, I'll make a motion to support that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Article 12. Town Hall Canvas. Question mark. Yeah, I, I don't have a number. It's a placeholder. Um, I actually think we'll probably pass over it for now, but we should anticipate something in the spring. Um, the bids for the. This one says 100,000. Yeah, that's what I put down as a swag, oh. and that's what I sent to the board yesterday. But, you know, after reviewing the painting bids for Melford again, those were 240, and we only budgeted 50,000. $240,000 to repaint this building? No, that's what it was in Milford. Well, so for the exterior home? exterior yeah but this is that like this, like, 10 oh, times a size <laughs> right but i don't the bids won't come in until the day after stm and i don't know if it's worth it to get on the life floor life. and have a conceptual conversation about what the cost might be so uh, it's uh, probably easier to come I thought out until we get information and you know, solve a plan i recommend you that. I, I thought this was for the campus well it is well it could also be used for the well siting that we have to pay out of pocket to do, which is uh, uh, I, good, but we should. Uh, I just don't uh, think it's worth it right now uh, to go through. 
from what I remember, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think I kind of hope that this is the last meeting. Do you say you put vinyl siding on it again? No, I no, 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 that wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> no, that we list we, that the town hall painting and the well be separate items versus kind of lumped into. Well, something. here's the here's the problem. This is why they're lumped together. Okay. Because we have a funding source already from Complete Streets in town that's, that's about 167,000, okay, and then which is campus, and then we also have money coming back potentially from the police station that's about 100,000, and then we have another 115 coming back hopefully from Inman Hill, and then we just got this MVP grant for another 280, okay. All of that sounds like a ton of money, right? But all of these projects basically are timed off of each other right and the availability of funds makes a difference there and so just like with our dep approval for this well which we got our whole plan is on pause until they come out and actually drill for the well and do a test well and that cost is going to cost us ten thousand dollars which we passed fifty thousand for the well so now i've got ten but like this you know we get the painting bid back and it comes in at 150 we're not going to have enough we've got to wait we might like it's just a, it's all it's jumbled together. The demo of the police station got put off eight months because dispatch was still in there. So I guess the idea is to have the funding available when the time presents, right? And so it's a little bit tricky because there's so many moving parts and we were using this money to match for a grant. And so the good news is it'll all be done hopefully by the end of this year. And it won't be an issue, but I, until... Um, so it sounds like you're passing over it? Yeah, I'm gonna pass over it because I just... Okay. I. It's just going to sit there in free cash anyway, hopefully. And when we, if you know, we'll just don't deal with it if um, the painting can't find enough money or something. Well, I mean, it's, well, if it comes back that high anyway, we should go It's back. coming out of free cash. Right. Right. So, what I think the FinCon recommendation do is to put that status a special account for, for the town hall campus and put it in there so it's air. And then we vote on it to spend it on, on the project, whether it's painting, the parking lot, or whatever. We leave it free cash, it's there for anybody to grab or ask for. Is there, is there the money that's coming back to those appropriate places that you mentioned? Is that going back in free cash, or can we can hear on the for account that like Mike mentioned? It already is earmarked. So the, um, the Inman Hill Road has to be put towards another capital project, so that would be this. The police station funds is basically free cash returned anyway. We, well, it's what's left over from the bond that they don't spend. That has to get reallocated back to a specific capital project in order to be used as a future town meeting vote. But any excess funds that we spent already came back. It, it's, it's basically like we're going to take all the scraps that are left over in all these accounts that we had and then say, and they can only go towards X. And so he's right in the sense that it'd be great if we had one spot that was X that we were sending all this money into. But, you know, we basically do because we have one line already that's Town Hall Canvas in Complete Streets that we've been using for that as a source. So, but we can't put, we, we can't put money into that because it was a debt. Anyway. So, <laughs> take money out of that one. Yeah, you can only spend from it. So, you know, it's personally, it's. How do we vote to make sure that this can happen? Well, it's not well money it doesn't get taken, like Mike said, by. You, know, you, can, you can vote on this. If it's free cash, then the balance is easy. So, if, if everything passed that we, that's on the paper that for free cash, and we're going to wind up with $180,000 in free cash. So, instead of $180,000, we're going to have $280,000 in free cash. Which again is there mm -hmm. for the take or for the use of whatever. It is being moved there. It's being moved to the town meeting, but it's a source. <laughs> it's yeah. a source of money. So <laughs> yes. the town hall, this campus needs a hundred thousand, but there's no plan. So what you do is to make sure because the money's there, let's take it and tie it up for this purpose. You start a uh, you see that they're the right? You yeah. just need to pass this. Yes, yeah, so can we pass well, this? Can we pass yeah. it? You make it a special account so you don't it doesn't drop into free cash at the end of the year if you don't spend it. That oh, was the You know what I mean? If you, you just can't put it in any old account. That's what this does. And at the end of the year, I 
it, it falls into yeah, free cash and we not voted. I'm not voting. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm obviously, I understand, Mike, but I have a problem putting any money into an account. I don't even know what the hell it is and how much we need. I, it's, you know what I mean? I, just, I would like to see some kind of, I mean, you spit off some a lot quotes, of things. Some quotes come back in. Well, anything. Yeah. I just, I mean, you just spit all that out. I just, Demoing yeah, it's it's a jumble. <laughs> you demo the police station, painted the structure, drilled the well. If you, if you made the camp, campus, hundred dollars a month. No, it's Tax not. So, any which way you slice it, it's not you enough. Call it anything you want, but you got to establish the count so it doesn't fall into the start. Why? Right, because right, you don't really know what it is. So keeping it free cash. So well, well in fact, what we know what it is? It's for you do pick it up. This won't be there. That's the concern. It, it's no, for the, the town hall campus. Yeah, we have we have to. We have to repave the lot. Oh, I know that. I have no idea how much money. No, so I, I understand, but it's definitely over 100 grand. It, it is what we're saying. This goes, this, not to interrupt, but we start to get that capital, like the capital thing you were saying. This is putting $100,000 of capital. At least well, I, I, capital. I totally understand, but it, without any knowledge of how much you need, why just keep it a free fact? So, you, you well, so it, it doesn't get it. So we at least have a, a we're starting our trend towards the right. towards that building. It's called saving up for the, yeah, for the big it's, expenses. It's, 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 Actually, so, expensive. I, I thought paving the parking lot was part, part of the town, the new police station. Only the no. section. No, on the line where it's done. But yeah, so painting the buildings, is that a chapel? It is. So, so the, I think for some clarification, what it, the, it would come in the motion. So let's say this passed, I'm fine with it either way. It's like uh, up to spend up to a hundred thousand dollars for projects related to the town hall campus, twenty Main Street. That's what say, or after any other relation there too, and that's what it would be. And then when bills came in for a thing related to the campus, that would fall within the scope of that as long as it's related to twenty Main Street, and it can be paid from that fund. Now you can make it more specific. That's an option. I think that was my concern last time is just opening it up and yeah. having it be for anything. And then we decide we, we decide, hey, no, we didn't want to paint. We wanted to air condition. We want to put new air conditioning in or we want to put new monitors in or we want to do this. We want to do that. And it's sitting there and it's not earmarked for the specific line item that we want because we all agree that the building needs to be painted. We all agree that we all agree that the well needs to be replaced because it's in the elevator shaft, right, or wherever it is, right? Yes. Oh, the thing is. Under my office. Under your office. Mm -hmm. like, like we all agree. I mean, I think we all agree that those things need to be done. Um, to the but, finance committee. But I think if we open it up to just kind of a, a, an open line, I mean, I think it's kind of the concern around the police kind of revolving fund. It's just kind of an open line, and it can be spent on anything versus. Be earmarked for specific projects. Yeah. Can we not can we not do those stipulations and have any of the main well, I mean, return through cash? You can do any number of things. I mean, we can, like I said, we can come back and we can say, okay, well, the demo is going to be forty thousand, and come back to town meeting. But the idea is about the timing of getting it done, right? That's the question, and so. We've been lucky in the sense that we got this great grant and that we were able to put money aside and have other funding sources. If we didn't, you would have had a request that's like $500,000 for the campus. And it would have been painting, restoration, paving. You can identify in the motion what you want. Uh, and you can make it specific to an address. You could do, I mean, I don't, Ex, you can say exterior work related to the camp, you know, like what you can do all of those things. That's what the motions are for, because you can amend them on the floor so that it is as specific as you need it to be to feel comfortable. I'm comfortable either which way. I think uh, I just know based on last time and then, you know, I want to have a nice, easy time meeting in the fall. Uh, you know, it's. Like I said, the only bid I'll have for sure before that time is for the painting. And so. I just think having a, the level of specificity for the taxpayers to understand where their money is being spent is useful versus having it just seem like it's just for potentially anything. And I'm not saying that we would or that you would or anyone would just kind of spend it willy nilly. But I think for the townspeople to understand where their money is going is, is useful. Why don't we do this? If you don't want to vote it tonight, vote it at the sixth or you know at the special town meeting, whether it's do it or not. 
and see if you guys can come up with a specific wording that is clear and concise that everybody agrees with. That's not defining it. Sure. That's how I've heard you say you mean it's not so. I was going to recommend passing over it. I recommended it to the board yesterday. We haven't met yet, so the board the board has agreed to put an article on to fund the town hall campus. That's a yes. Um, we're waiting for free cash to come back, and then I was going to recommend an amount to them next week at the meeting, and then bring it to you guys for funding source. Um, the board of selectmen, the board as far board as board. I know, would like to fund it. Not our job. It's just if we have a talk about it. Why don't we do that and we'll get some information? Okay, so you can decide whether or not you want to. But that's, but that's I'm actually glad to, like, to, you know, to hear what your thoughts are so we can take, maybe make it very specific. Problems. So let's vote to close Article 12 so we have more information. Well, right now, I'll make a motion to for Article 12 to pass over. Oh, you already did that. Did anybody second? I second. Okay. okay. All those in favor of that? All right, pass. All right. Closing and pass over to more information. <coughs> Article 13, buckets pass over. That's pass over. We already did that in May. Okay, very good. So we're moving to Article 15. The store the storage, $3,000. Yep, that's the number this afternoon. Um, are you on that group, Long? I can read the email. What's the NCBC? That's for um, that's storing of historical documents. Um, that are currently in the and not only just documents, um, so okay. historical okay, conservation, preservation, and archival storage of artifacts, documents, textiles, and clothing in the collections of a historic society. Didn't we do this last time? Did we fund this? We do a little bit every every once in a while. Because I remember. So, yeah. This is this is all like one time thing, or is this like a that is what budget type? They come back with different projects like this. They this, is, this is to spend C, CPC. This is a project. Yeah. So, so um, CPC will, will be presenting this mm -hmm. to the people. Mm -hmm. The moderator will then have the CPC makes their presentation mm -hmm. and delivers the uh, motion. The moderator will turn to the FinCom and ask the FinCom. <laughs> And usually, on the FinCom, if we're in agreement to support it, in terms of, uh, the Finance Committee uh, supports this motion. I'm like, so I'm going to decide if, if how do we support the CPC spending that money for that. I think just in, in practice, you know, not having the boards come and present why they need this money, and I'm not saying it's not useful. It, it puts us in a very difficult position. Yeah, absolutely. Where we don't know, you know we're relying on you, you're kind of explaining what you know about it, but we don't know it. And the person who is requesting this, it, it seems to me that they should be coming to FinCom and explaining why they why they people at FinCom should be coming <laughs> and, and and requesting um, why they need this this funds because we're, we're relying on kind of Emails. emails or secondhand information. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, the yeah, that's, that's, that's the way we always did. And, and yeah, I don't know when it changed, but now with this, it's even easier. That's my point. Right? <laughs> then, then, I mean, you could right now, like the historical person could be just sitting there. They don't have to be sitting so, there. Yeah, we yeah. typically have been for articles, I think, because of the weird swap. I mean, we had people come for the last budget. The last couple of years have been off, but typically, we send out an email that says, or Mike has been sending out an email before this that says, if you have an article on the warrant, you need to come to a FinCom meeting. And I know for the budget, um, I send them out a schedule in the beginning that shows them possible FinCom dates and they have to pick a date. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they should absolutely 100% have well, to come to me. I'm all for another meeting next week. Well, again, so, what, what we have to do is, is that used to be standard practice uh -huh. up until several years ago, okay? When I first got on this committee, I don't want to sound, you know, so I've been on this committee a long time. It wouldn't make it to this if they didn't show up and explain to the finance committee what the money's needed for. So all of these questions could be answered. Director Besson. 
that uh, doesn't, doesn't make sense. So, as again, as a side note, I think going forward for this new committee, because every year we're basically a new committee, is we let everybody know ahead of time, ahead of time that no article will be considered if it isn't if the proponent isn't here to explain it. We're not going to waste our time because basically we just wasted 20 minutes talking about something. No, is that something, is that something you do? How do I say this out loud? All right, better articulate this. In other words, we go through the 19 or whatever number of articles we have here today, and then we just bring in the people and the ones that we have questions for. So we see clearly some of these we don't have questions on. Is that, does that make sense as well? Like, in other words, have a pre meeting and then, and then a cleanup meeting? I'm not only asking a question. But, well, typically, like, if there's a, he's right, if there's a request, they should be at the meeting, and then, they, well, they should come to see the FinCom, and they should also go to town meeting to defend right. their article on the That is what should happen. I mean, what happens normally is I'm talking a lot because a lot of these are selectments articles that I've been a part of and that put on, right? Sure. And so, like, I mean, like, for the clerks, I mean, I'm not, Ellen's usually pretty good about being at meetings typically, so I'm not, I'm just going to use her as an example. Like, she typically comes to a meeting and will tell you this is what it's for. Like, so I think it's for this time, I think it's just a matter of, you know, timing. Yeah, yeah current, staff, current staff, you know? staff, something we could certainly, right. on a meeting like this, we could change and have it. Most departments will, or boards will usually come to a meeting when requested. We have a couple that often. So they're going to get, they've fallen out of the habit. Of says right here in the bylaws, yep. chapter four, finance committee, section five, all officers, agents, and committees of the town shall give the finance committee access to their books, records, and accounts, and furnish all information with respect to the conduct of the town's affairs, i.e. money affairs, that it shall request. It shall make reports and recommendations to the select board with respect to the management of town affairs and the conduct of all the park. This is an important board. Absolutely. So again, it's fallen out of practice of finances. That this board, this board is not a rubber stamp. <laughs> so the CP, so the next couple, so article 13. Yeah, we're on 15 now. 15. So storage for 3000 dollars So I'll make a motion to support the CPC motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Article May. See, that's why I, reports are always at. I, I, yes, my bad, thank you. So we yeah. have yeah. But mine is not because I don't know if it's valuable or not, right? but I just don't know what it is. So, so, it's, so, so it's, a, it's a majority. It's a majority on Article 15. Moving to Article 16, cameras at Lowell Castle. Castle. Uh, Pat. Yeah, this is a memorial. It's a bad right here. A little memorial field. A little memorial. I thought it was a restaurant. Like, I was just saying, isn't it? That's kind of crazy. Security. What's the name of the field out back behind the memorial? Is that the Lowell field? Or is that the. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I, I know we went and looked at cameras. What happened? You know? It doesn't matter. Today is the okay. Maybe. All right. So, Article 18, Survey Morrison Drive. I can say that. I know it says highway survey. No, right. it's, it's no. says select, that's, but that's, that's, that's just historic for some reason on the warrant. It's just a problem. I know. Uh, okay, so anyway, I can definitely speak to these just a little bit later on. So, Morrison Drive. No, it's not Morrison Drive. Here. This is Morrison Drive. The survey. Oh, this on. is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Request. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm ahead of myself. We have a request in order to survey the boundaries around the old police station. 
so that an easement can be identified for the and access to the town land. Access to town land. So this is the police station that was never built. Never finished. Correct. Yes. It exists. <laughs> so, okay. so that's six thousand dollars to basically survey the fire station and the piece on the other side of the road. That is the estimate you could get, yes. And to get the yes. And, and to designate the easement the best way. So it's not doesn't affect access to that that the fire station or the back piece. Uh, and for what what purpose are we doing this? Since the, the access, so behind there is town owned conservation land for passive use for you know walking trails, what have you. Okay. This will allow a full easement up to the back to access that. And I believe that the, the goal is to put in a little bit of parking and then designate so that they can walk up through. Now there was some talk about them wanting to come around. And what did they, they originally want to do? Was okay. They wanted to take all of that is correct and true. And I, I'm only saying it, it's this is in conjunction with an RFP that we are also trying to do about the potential sale and valuation of Morrison Drive. That's how this came to be. So this article about doing the survey ahead of time is basically to establish how the parcel could potentially be valued and sold and create this easement to get to this land in the back. Um, and and now the we have also within talking about is what? With the police station is the past the fire park. Just in full explosion. With a building, with a building mm -hmm. is that was yeah. built by donation mm -hmm. that was at one time considered to be within the police station. So the town was the board of selectmen uh, entertaining the idea of selling that piece? Yes. Full disclosure to the board, I am a, a butter to that property. So I own a piece of property. Yes. Yeah, so, just so that everybody knows so, that it's not found out later or something. And I, I will also add, we are nowhere close. Uh, we are still in the, we're not, we not, we have to go to town, we need to sell a parcel. We have to go, we haven't even got the valuation of the parcel. This um, surveying in order to identify boundaries, is uh, and how you would access it without access the trails, right? It's, and and that that block without interrupting, right? The fire block. And this land was never surveyed when we <coughs> built that building. Well, it had to be surveyed to find out best access and also for <coughs> uh, the easement. I, I mean, as far as yes, yeah, we know. Well, I mean, we, yeah, we know with the property. Essentially, yeah. it's not staked anymore. Probably the stakes fell over, but I mean, if, even having it staked is going to have a cost associated. There's also a level of difficulty, just if you're not aware of it. If you go to the fire station's parking lot, the back edge of it is an entire wetland area, and then there's a small bridge right now, if you will, that makes it over to where the police station was built to the patch of land that's over there. So I would assume this has you know, some wetland impact, yep. things of that, and how to, how to cross that without going to the center of the fire station. Do you have any idea what the property is worth? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. <clears throat> because a lot of time and money and materials was spent, donated to the town. And so the project is in some stage of completion. There's also some complexity to it in the sense that it overlaps a bit with the fire station. So we can't figure out what the value is until we start doing these correct steps. So is it, yes, right. And so will somebody pay for it if it's still sharing something potentially with the fire station? Probably not. Um, and again, maybe the value is very little and we decide to keep it and use it for another purpose, but we won't know that without a value. So and the way to do that is to put it up, so. And the survey is the first step. It would be, yeah. But it's uh, all the order of our projects right now, it's further down the road. This is. So, we're so select boards uh, article, they'll be presenting it to the people. The monitor will <laughs> turn to us and say, we use the board. Let's spend, let's spend that in $6. Technically, it's a, it's a CPC, well, land use support article, I guess, right? 
the board is agreed to put on. It'll, it'll be spoken at too. Right. Yeah, we'll have somebody that. Right. Yeah, there might be a couple speakers that support that. So the money come from CP? Sadly, no. So the question is. Uh, will we support spending that money to find out what that property is worth for whatever plans going to ask whether it's to sell it or to purchase it or whatever? Nobody's asking us what we should do with it. They're just trying to put together a value associated with today's value yeah. idea. Yeah. So, again, for, for discussion, I think it would be money well spent. And so a decision can be made. As long as the, the, the decision doesn't take 15 years. I guess my only concern is we do these things, and like you say, 15 years later, are we going to do another survey? Right. Yes, I am. I'm a little reluctant to spend money on this. Well, what, where, where is that happening? Where is that happening? Mm -hmm. Where have we spent money on the survey, and then 15 years later? We didn't bring it to the town because everything we've surveyed here to, to, to potentially do every time we spent money to potentially do something with a piece of land here in, in, in Mendon, we we presented almost immediately. Well, and it's quite likely just has been turned down, especially when you talk about the yeah. So maybe yeah, I just I, I don't 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 in think New York, just, you're gonna not, just I'm maybe not just surveys and just in general. I, again, I just would ask where 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 have we done it? You say because you're, you're, you're uh, so, I think so, this community clarification is on the timeline. I'm saying it's not immediate. What I'm saying, when I think of immediate, I'm thinking of North Ave. Morrison Drive would be the next parcel that we would deal with once we figure out what's going to happen with North Ave. So we had already contracted with Keller Williams in order to help us identify the value of that property. So this would certainly aid in the assistance of figuring out what the actual value is for sale to sell it. But it's not going to sell like in May. It's going to sell next year or something like that down the road. I just don't want people to think that this is tied directly to the sale. It's not happening right now. We're doing more of that right now. So I guess it's it's not the priority. That's one we're here. No, it's, it's the cost. It's the well, it's, it's, it's the ten grand is the cost of sticking out with the work. I mean, it's, it's the, the priority is there because it's the first step in getting us to that piece. It's, we're not just doing, we're not saying that she, I'm sorry, what Kim is saying is that if when we do this now, we're not going to have it for sale within a year. We're going to then probably likely work with Keller Williams again if we can get a contract with them for that piece to then market that piece and we'll continue to say, but it may be a year or two away. But to say that we're just going to survey it and then if the survey comes back and says there's no way to do this or it's, it's, right. it's ridiculous to do it. Then we at least know, okay, it's just going to be for future municipal use or make it conservation land. Or, you know what, it really is going to, my opinion on this is that we're going to find out that it's really suitable to one buyer who probably wants it, and that guy's going to want to buy it. <laughs> and we're going to find out, not him. Not him. I full story. I'll see what some of us are using against. I'm not the only one. So. Yeah, and so, or I'm going to say the other possibility is we find out because there's only one buyer and the value for the thing is so low that the town is better off keeping it and investing in it for something, provided that we can provide safe access to the building, which is tricky because it's through the fire station park. And we can't do any of them. Like, I mean, I'm just going to throw say okay. this aside. Many of you may have heard a couple of years ago the conversation about moving the senior center to Morrison Drive. So this doing this type of work up front helps narrow down and talk about potential things, right? Like maybe that is an option, but it's probably not. Is it capable for community center? Probably not. Does it have an actual value? We don't know, but that we have a responsibility to find out. And that's what this stuff does. And there are some competing easement issues around this property because since it was built so odd. Okay, that, that helps. Thank you. So uh, for Article 18, I'll make a motion to support the uh, select board or whoever's doing the presentation for the 10,000. What's that? 
You have this 10. I have a pause. I have a six. I have, I have six. I just got, I got that this afternoon. Six. Okay. We're running off an old sheet. I think. Yeah, no well, that's because I, I, I didn't get my finals until this afternoon. Okay. We're, we're going I, to I think I got, I got still with the yeah. file. So we'll slightly update. Okay. No, it's six. It's six. Yeah. It's six. Yeah. And this is three. Yeah. It's three storms. So. Okay. When I start the spreadsheet, it's well before we know what recash is. And it's just articles and concept amounts. And then it gets narrowed down to actuals. So I made the motion to yep. a second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And no nays. Uh, I'm waiting for the Article 19. Article 19. This is the exciting. <laughs> survey. <laughs> no. Survey. No. Survey. No. <laughs> so we're gonna be here till. Uh, no. This, hopefully, there, this, I'll, I'll be able to explain this good enough that the questions will be. Okay. Why don't we wait? I'll start with something before you. I say it. I was just gonna say we better make the motion as vague as possible on the floor. Sure. Okay. That's, that's yeah. what we want. That. Well, you're gonna write this. So. <laughs> Well, again, this is another one we're not presenting. Yeah, right, right. We're a like historical. Um, so, Kinsey Lane and uh, Hill Street, uh, I don't know, you, Kinsey Lane goes around the back side of the lake, and Hill Street is across from the lake. Um, just before you get to like Alicante, it shoots right. up there. Yeah. So, these roads have not been accepted by men in for the times that men have been here. 35 years, 350 years, right? 35 that I can attest to. All right. So they've never really been accepted. And what happens is we're not supposed to extend money on for boat repairs for these roads um, unless it's an emergency. Um, I guess every snowstorm constitutes an emergency. Our equipment gets torn up up there, um, and the roads are in major disrepair. Uh, they need they, they're, they're, there's a right at the beginning of Kinsey Lane requires a culvert uh, to just get the water out of there. The fact that the outlet that goes down through Hawks' farm is infiltrated by beavers and they haven't trapped and released the, the dams yet, the water is very high right now, especially with the amount of rain they had. The road, the roadway is almost getting covered and washed up. So there's some things that can be done there to, re to get these roads repaired. And Hill Street is a very short street. But, by the, but the way the water runs off of it, it just gets eaten up because there's no real good drainage up there. It's just in the water. However, there's a lot of residents that actually do live in this especially Kinsey Lane, right? The houses are tight over there. You, there's, there's quite a bit of contact. So what this amount of money to do is we had, uh, we had contacted Gary Arnhelm and just said from an aerial map, you know, give us an idea of what it would be to give us the meets and bounds of what currently is on these roads. Also, they're going to deliver back to us what are, who owns the fees in the road, who owns a cross, how do we get this so that we can get with the residents to meet with them to say, hey, this is, we're not, we don't want to take you in, we don't want to take away what you have for your beachfront property, which may be across the street. And, and this was tried uh, uh, 10 years ago, I think, we yeah. had done. But it wasn't presented in this manner. So what we're trying to do is get this done so we know exactly where everything is, be able to meet with all the residents. And uh, Hill Street is probably not as critical um, as Kinsey Lane because there's the beach fronts. Uh, but to be able to get with these folks so that we can get the roads accepted and then we can now get them prepared to where they should be. They are taxpayers in this town. Taxpayer money goes to fix all of those except things. So you know, their money that they pay goes to fix all of our roads, but our money can't go to their roads unless it's an extreme emergency just to get the road passed. So this is phase one of trying to get those roads. But the town doesn't own these roads. We don't. This is this is privately held land, right? That's correct. That the town would be serving privately held land for the betterment of the, the people who own it. I'll have to run by council, but I mean, I, we we need. Yeah, I I don't I I I, I agree with what you're saying, uh, and, and it, we should. It's a it's tricky because because it is a public way, and they do pay. They had paid fees <clears throat> in the past about it, but it 
we have our, we do have some sort of responsibility to try to find a way to accept this road, assuming mm -hmm. that the residents will allow it. And part of that is identifying where the road is or our easements are or whatever in it. Because my concern when this first came up was that we don't even know where the road ends and their land begins, which is, and we have to start somewhere. There, that Alan had requested funding to actually start doing repairs on this road, but we don't own it. And so we need to start, we need to do something. Uh, so it's going to involve council, obviously. It's going to involve survey work. It's going to involve um, working with the residents on that road. It's going to involve a bunch of different things. I mean, and then eventually it will culminate in us accepting the road at a town meeting. That's and then us repairing the road. That's but this legwork that's going to get done up front. It's 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 more complicated than just surveying it. But that's. And uh, again, to reiterate what Kim said, I, I'm a firm believer it is the, the town's responsibility to try to act on this to cure a pro an aged old problem that's been, like you said, been around for before we went. Any one of us we did. Just to give my, give you a little more background. So is this road currently paved or repaired by the residents of the Leonard Association for the Post? So a, a certain amount uh, was it was probably likely 10 years ago that the residents did get together uh, and paid to pay a portion of it. Um, I don't know if they paid the whole thing. Um, and it is, I just happened down there a lot. So I, I, I go to a friend's house that, that's down there and it's way down. So you get to travel the whole thing. Um, and that went a lot us. Yeah. And, and then, Again, I just can only fall back to the fact that their tax money goes to pay. And, and mind you, their valuations are likely higher than ours because they're they're on the lakes. They get that that extra valuation. So that they're paying taxes to fix all these roads in town except the ones that they are the only two roads like this? Um, the only two there may be a couple of other roads that are here and there that have a house on them, just Western one house. Circle. What's that? To Chris Western Circle, right, Chris? Is yeah, right. So where Chris Burke lives, there's him. So there's a it's essentially his driveway. Now there's another one house down there. They're gonna put a third. Um, you know, again, that's a 800 feet in. So that's even if that was something that we would we could accept that likely without. And those houses have been built in these times where just only the fee in the road is different than your lot that stretches across the street to the boundary of the lake. And you know, there was not necessarily a fee in the road. So for instance, when we build a new subdivision, it's called a fee in the road that, that they own until the road's accepted, then the fee in the road gets delivered to the town. So there's there's accommodations for all that in, in, in current times, but Kinsley Lane was essentially a dirt path with a trolley car on it that, that, that Traveled around the lake um, and back in the days of when, right. so. way before our time. Yeah. Yeah. So just going through, if you've been through Worcester, there's a ton of those roads. And if I didn't have a four wheel drive, you're not getting through. Really? And it's because the people that own houses on that road, they don't pay to get the old repairs. They're mostly dirt. It's not unusual at all. It's a big city. There's right. hundreds of them. Really? Hundreds. So I guess what I'm going to the point is what. Is there a concern by the town for safety, or what's the reason? The reason well, it's just deplorable. But it's so private. yes, and that highway survey, the highway survey came forward and asked. The house. Right, because in Worcester it's private. It's, Worcester, for example, will go down the road if it's passable to pick up the trash and stuff. If the residents maintain the road, so the trash truck can go through. But if it's not, the trash won't take it through. I think what I would put in the motion, so part of this is actually reaching out, doing the legal work, reaching out to the residents, getting consent for some of this, right? So we have to, because it's, I mean, we have to get the buy-in from the residents. That's a fact. I mean, you can't do this without taking it by in no domain. I mean, Are they so, interested in this at all? Well, it started by residents calling me, so right. <laughs> right. I didn't so, just wake it up. I, I think I would put the motion something like research, legal, and survey work related to Kinsley Lane. 
and then you can in Hill Street. In Hill Street, and then. But again, you know, back to what's the, the top? Is there a safety issue? Because if there's not, I, I. Alan said that there's something about the road conditions and some sort of grading issue. I wasn't really paying attention. But the residents should be actually <laughs> paying for that. Was that they bought like they bought the house. They knew the condition. It's their responsibility to keep the room. So it's not a town certified room. Is there any benefit in the town? The fact is that they determine that it's on the private road and now we can consider the yeah, public the point. They, they might have bought it because it's on a private road. That's a benefit. Yeah. Well, that's why I think we have to. I just want to know tax base would change. Reach out to all of the residents. Yeah, so do we just do we reduce their taxes now because they don't get their own? I would think it would be a county in the evaluation. I don't know. Well, that's true. I mean, that part is actually true. So well, by, 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 to my point, then, if it's it a, would then be a value of value to the property. Right. So yeah. Yeah. It, again, if the residents keep up the road, it shouldn't have been. If there are good streets, theoretically. Yeah, I don't think that the street uh, itself is probably not. Yeah. It, it, it is a bad street. You can, it's, I mean, it's passable. There's certain pieces of it that there would, could get some better drainage on it to, and, and allow for the culverts to come through. So, hey, look, I, 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 don't, I, mean, I think it's a tough one, but I, I don't see the benefit to the rest of the taxpayers. In it's the benefit is to why? Well, so, we, the general public taxpayers is, you know, if I buy a house on a dirt road and I know it's private, I knew that going in. And I knew that I was going to have to spend money in association to fix the road. There's no association. Well, well, they could sure. develop an association. They, that's what they need to do. Wow. Really? That's, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a hot ass. <laughs> yeah, apparently you are. <laughs> I, I mean, well, that's how it works. We're trying to a road that is publicly used by people all over this town and, and people coming to visit, whatever. I, I, I guess. Maybe I don't understand the private way thing. Maybe I'll get a, a real rude away from it. It's so, so this isn't Worcester though. We're in Menden. No, it's the same we have two roads that, that, that are deplorable in Menden right now that are highly used. You're talking about a private road with three houses on it that nobody goes down. That maybe the trash truck doesn't even go down. No, there's many. Oh, it, it's the same concept though. It's, what's the benefit for the rest of the taxpayer base? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the what's, well, what's the detriment? What, what's the detriment to the rest of the taxpayers? To pay to get the road fixed and all this money. I mean, there's no benefit to the town, right? Other than the community that lives, the neighbors that live on that road. Well, so, so is, is there public there, land on this road? What's that? Is there public land on this road? It's a town owned land that's accessed by this road. I don't know if the town owns anything up back. I'd have to look. I think that would be something that would be interesting to know. Is, is there, you know, is there access to this land for, for other residents other than people who have private houses on the land? I, I just here, I don't, I don't know. I don't know on private ways that they can restrict people, the general public, from going down. Many well, times it depends on the word. I'm trying to think of instances in which we have been actually approached by residents in order to adopt a road. We've done that in the past. We've What's that? With a private road, we've had residents come forward before and ask us to actually accept the road so that it could be maintained. That's something yeah, so that happens. What do we do? What I mean, in, in, in the respect of a road that is abandoned, per se, right, by a developer, it's still a private road at that point. So, what do we do with those people? They're out of line. Isn't there a bond? Oh, see, that's how we know. No, I see, I disagree. Oh, I don't know. I've seen that in other developments, like back in the 08, and it happened a lot. I'm not trying to expedite this, but I am. I'll stop. I want to go, but um, I what I either which way we're not repairing it unless we do something here. So the fifty thousand was the amount that Alan had requested in order to get started to do some repair work or some survey work. It's going to be expensive. We already got an estimate, but I do think we need to do something to establish where we're at currently with the residents of that road and their desire to have the road. Be a part of this and whatever. That is necessary. I mean, if, if residents desire it, why can't they pay for it? Well, that's the thing. And is it all of the residents? I mean, we don't, we could go, through, there's a possibility we could go through this. And if five residents say yes and two residents say no, then we're, it has to be unanimous, right? So there's a lot of, I don't know, so, so, there. so a road that has been here in Men. So I suppose 
every road that was here prior to us doing subdivision regulation could essentially just be considered a private road. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a public Millville Road, Blackstone Street. All these roads have been here since they were car paths. Yeah, but well, what what makes them a public road? But they've been approved by the time, so I'm wondering. Right, no? so how, right? well, how do we adopt those roads? That's the question. Let's, I mean, let's. <laughs> I, well, I, just, I think we need more information. I, I, I'm not saying that it's good or bad. I just there's not enough information here to decide like what this fifty thousand is going for. I, I just like is there public land on it? What is the money actually going for? Is it actual repairs of the road? No, no. it's to serve it. Both roads. I personally would like to know where at least our easement is on the roads for liability purposes, for public safety issues, for all of that. That would be my desire. That's, I mean, that's a legitimate, that's <laughs> I mean, a legitimate reason. Whether or not we ever take it on as our own, or I want to know if somebody's built their part of the road into their, you know what I mean, their yard is the street. I want to know that piece. Right. Uh, but can't you just say Alan requested 50,000 for repairs? And no, 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 originally there was a request. What sparked this? was a request for money to repair the road, but we can't do that. Because it's not ours. Unless the road washes away, essentially, right? Which, which to me, and maybe I'm completely wrong, but to me, it's it's always been in my mind, why do we not maintain this road, whether it's public or private? Everybody pays taxes, and I highly doubt their taxes are, are not, well, yeah, for their, I highly doubt the evaluation of those houses because it's Kinsey Lane, are lower, or they pay a lower tax rate because of because of they're on Kinsey Lane. Well, I was just a reason like I plow drive I plow uh, private lane policy, and it's oh, the town's never going to accept it ever ever regardless of how low it's paid. Because of the slope. Because of the slope, they didn't meet any sort mm -hmm. of subdivision rules. They made it to private road or something there, but. I mean, I don't know. I'd like to know that too. If there's <laughs> any violations, like like, is there any violations that that has currently with the town with the So why the on the value going back to the value? So the current value of say say house a a house on mm -hmm. if you put in a brand new road and sidewalks and everything, you don't think the value is. We're not saying. Look, we never talked about putting in a brand oh, new road. Oh, wait up! All we talked about was getting some drainage in there and and maintaining the road as far as payment is concerned. Same no. with we we just needed to know where it is now so we can start to figure it out. Any anybody that we wanted to be able to get an easement over these people's property, if, if that's the case, to say that this is now a town maintained road. We're not going to put in street lights and sidewalks and all this nonsense. Paving or I, paving, yes. Paving. And I see this in the same way that I we, we're talking about Morrison Drive. This is a road that I've heard come up every other year since I've been here about <laughs> something needs to be done or not done or whose is it or whatever. I'd like to start finding solutions to these concept conversations that are out there. And if we can survey it and get a little more clarity, that would help with a lot of the, you know, questioning that people do. So maybe I think, regardless of what is done, the improvement is going to increase the value of the Why well, there's pavement on the road now. How is the improvement? Obviously because there's a little drain. You, know, you don't think it's going to improve it? Right. It's paid. The pavement does it to transition from private to public. So that would yeah. that would increase the value of homes, which is why I asked originally. Okay, great. The taxes will go up. Well, that's what I said. It's an incentive to the town. So if we're spending fifty thousand well, dollars, and then maybe more well, later. Well, the, the, the condition of the road isn't affected. It doesn't go both ways. No, no. If it becomes a public way, okay. So maybe their valuation is lower lower right now. If it becomes a public way, it'll increase their valuation, and the taxes will be higher. Do we, know going going around the Do we know how many properties around us? Taking a look at it. What? 50? 50? Maybe more? I think it's positive if it, if it changes the amount, especially if it changes the evaluation. Again, I think it's an investment it's easily to, to go forward to try to come up with a cure for a problem. Any idea on the cost to? to to fix it. It was, right. it, was, it was it was to fix the, the really bad things that were there right now it was roughly 50 to 60 grand, Alan said, to get that first section fixed because of the, we have to change a culvert uh, and get, get the drainage flowing properly under that first section where the inlet comes in and having it down there 
in a bit, but you know, then maybe there's sections that, that can be repaired. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe the worst, and then then you would look at maybe repaving the whole thing that helps you down. Mm -hmm. More possibly. Have, have the residents um, attended this select board meeting and requested this? No, they, I, they've only, I've talked to a few residents that have called me, that in which, again, started the conversation originally for the repairs. My take on it is that we need more information. Yeah. That, that's my take. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. What information? What information do you need? Is there public land on, accessed on this road? Okay. How many residents would this affect? Okay. Can, it, can we get a map of exactly where it is versus just saying it's this road versus that road? Is there assessment yeah. being lowered? Just of the information. State? You know, we're, we're asking. <laughs> to spend fifty thousand. That is going to eventually snowball into maybe a couple hundred thousand. And it may be a very good thing. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I, I just don't know. Right. I don't have enough information. I don't. All right, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you get me a list of questions if, that everybody has so I can get all the answers? I'm happy to email. Yeah. Yeah. You can email me and I'll work on, I'll put together a list for yeah, the just get sent it to the BLS. Well, it should be in the meeting minutes too, right? Because the kids in going to want to know. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I think you will yeah. uh, get to it next fully I'm sorry. Rush and using what you sent, you're going to directly send it to the board and copy our recording for so she will record it as, 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 as a document. So. Yeah. And then we, then, then we have it recorded. In, and, and again, I'm not adverse to if it's good or it's bad. I just want information to make decisions. That's that's my, my take on this and, and, and a lot of these articles. Yep. It's just information, not having the right information to make sure that we're representing the townspeople in, in, in the correct way. That's that's my take on it. Yeah, sure, yeah, just like I said, yeah. Let, yeah. let me at least get the answer. Yeah, of course. Or even could the first step be meeting with all those residents in a meeting? So I don't think that's a FinCom thing to do. No, no, no. But no, no, it would be, the, it would be, or, or so no, my goal is to no, 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 petition their neighbors. Before you spent the 50 grand, I mean, or you can be a leader in the community and, and start to work with them and do this yourself. Okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to push these people away. I'm trying to embrace what they've asked me to do for them. Okay. Yeah. So, but it sounds like only a handful of people. It's a lot of people that live there. So maybe it'd be worthwhile to have those. No, I, I agree. And, and the plan was to have a meeting with everybody okay. once we knew where things were. If if the advice is that we should do that ahead of time. I'm not definitely not opposed to doing that. Um, I just wanted to before I met with them, wanted to have this in hand that said, "Hey, yes, there's five properties here that that go over the road. We're not we're not planning on taking your land by any stretch, but we there's already a road that passes over it, so we'd like to put an easement on it. Can and are you okay with this so that we now we can get this road accepted? Because that was what we ran into the last time. There was some people that thought we were taking their land." taking access to there and they never grew any legs past this because we know we knew where anything was. So this time we were going this route. But if, if it makes more sense and, and, and now that we're saying it out loud, I kind of do agree with you. Maybe we just get a meeting, try to get all the residents in, we'll send a letter out to everybody. I'll go door to door if I have to and, and knock on the doors and ask them. Um, so only because I, the people that I've talked to allude to me that the other people on the street feel the same way. And there was only a few people before that were dissenting on it. Again, it never relates because they thought they were taking it away. And, and not to beat this because we've already beat this into submission, but I imagine if it's a town road, there's certain widths and requirements that may eat into the, the yard that some people may object to. So right, so that 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 was a question that did come up. And the, the question was to see what's there now and maintain it as is. Because there, you you'd never and there's certain areas of this that you would ne you would have to get into people's houses because there's there's areas that the width is just as that's all you're going to get. Um, so we would likely the plan was to just get it completely where it is because there's old roads that that again are accepted. I don't know, even try to find those that are small. You have even not meeting requirements. So right, Lovell Street I think is one that comes to mind. Things like that. So, 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 so. 
Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a recommendation and turn maybe turn it into a motion that we uh, do not go forward with any action on Article 19 until we get further information. It's not. A, it's not a, it's not a support, and it's not a denial of support for the article. It's just more, no action taken. I'll second that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. That's I thought I wanted to just explain the explanation board that you want. The other ones are not finance committee. Perfect. I, okay. I think that concludes our article in the business. And then our next board <laughs> is, is to interview Mike. Right. No offense, but I'm going to go. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I have my kids at home. It takes me an hour to get there. Oh, great. Great. I already emailed the chair. For consideration for the next meeting, too. Okay, so you're all set there. Yeah, how many openings do we have right now? Three, two, two, two. There's two open spots, and right now, well, maybe it's. So I thought there was somebody naming Anthony that was appointed, so maybe it's actually not one, two, three, four, five. Apparently, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Jack, Jack is the only one missing tonight, right? right. And then there's two to seven seats total. And we have two candidates we've interviewed so far. Yeah, because yeah. the front door is unlocked. Well, if I recall, yeah. one of our meetings, and I don't think you're on yeah, the floor, I thought we. I thought we. You had two candidates we interviewed before, I thought we were. Oh, yeah. Some in the same Are you accommodation, which I can agree with. Uh, That's right. Uh, so is that like squat? So. I, as I got with Kim, and the, the recommendation that we put forth for that meeting is, is going to go to the select board on the tech. So they're going to have our recommendation on the tech in their agenda. Uh, and now we have a, a for three candidates for two well, for two candidates right now. As I, I push those, for, I'll push this through after the after this meeting. I couldn't do it beforehand, so, so I've already done the work to get the two in previously. Once I'm done with Mike, right. and it's as far as everybody's concerned, if everybody's good, we'll push this for the select board. Have three opportunities okay. to, to sure. see two people in the board. And, and as I understand it, it might be probably tell us that I think the the your email or letter kind of kind of got crossed in the mix of time. Yeah, I've been communicating with Norm. I was communicating with other members of the select board, um, and then. A lot of time in the past. I have email saved uh, with Mark back uh, early June, um, uh, yeah. trying to inquire about joining. Sure. So yeah, so you're quite frankly hidden, trying to interview at the same time. You were basically interviewing the others. Yeah, and nobody was getting back to me on how to do it, how to go through anything. So. Uh, no, no, What's no, your no. name, Mike? Uh, Mike Krager, K R A G E R. So, so Mike, just to you know, to give a little context, it was obviously our chair. Um, was elected to the select board, and we had uh, obviously the COVID, and there was a lot of trying to get these interviews. So I, we apologize to the board for it wasn't that we were kind of neglecting you or yeah. Not, it, it, there was probably just a lot of things moving in something got lost in the show. Yeah, yeah. Heather was our interim chair, and she left as well. So yeah, so <clears throat> we were interviewing at the time. There was only one spot available. So yeah. now it's Actually, so I think let's open up our line of question and you might at least tell me a little bit about yourself and like how you're interested in this and where I'm sure we can open up to like a line of question. Yeah, sure. Um, so I got interested in this uh, as we're going through all of the school budgeting uh, details. Uh, I've lived in Menden since uh, 2014. I remember 2014 is when I moved here. Uh, so I kind of lived through, you know, one big override detail, um, you know, coming through again, and I uh, was getting involved, just trying to understand budgetary details of what's going on with the school, what's going on with the town, um, and I felt like there was places where I could help add value because I'm typically good with, you know, managing numbers, managing budgets, and uh, you know, I wanted to try and give back to make sure that we're doing the right things for our townspeople, right things for the schools. I wasn't completely happy with the way I saw things come to fruition. Um, so I wanted to see how I could help. Um, I feel what that I can do for a living. 
So I'm a program manager uh, at Bose, and essentially, uh, Bose gives me a bunch of money and a bunch of people, and says, you know, take uh, take all these engineers and make a concept into reality and put a product on the shelf and make millions of them. So I'm managing budgets that are already bigger than you know the entire town by myself as as the manager. You know, I manage teams of uh, anywhere from 10, 20, 50, you know, 25 people uh, across multiple different disciplines. Things that I went to school for, things that I didn't go to school for, um, you know, working with executives and uh, you know trying to figure out how to look at details and uh, crunch numbers, but be able to roll up everything that's sort of coming at me from multiple different directions, and be able to make sense of it all, um, and sort of make the right decision, right? Because when the fire chief comes to you and says, "I have to have X, Y, and Z," well, that's like when my mechanical engineers come to me and say, "Well, if I don't have," ABC, then everything's going to go, you know, go down the drain, right? Well, I need to be able to weigh what the, you know, the fire chief wants versus the police chief versus everybody else and make those decisions on my own. So, you know, these are these are the same types of things that I deal with in my, my job every day. Um, you know, and it's for multiple long range vision type stuff too. So, you know, I'm trying to do these programs over multiple years and now in my current role, I'm about, you know, strategies of how you know it's it's really about how technologies roll out but you know i need to be thinking about how things want to uh, how things want to come to fruition three four or five years from now right so i need to be able to look at you know things like budgets and what are we spending now versus what the benefit we're going to get later um you know what are our budgets look like for the next few years for the things that i manage and what i do and how that rolls into the overall company so have you had any experience with the spells? Uh, no. So I don't have, you know, an official finance background. Um, this is my first time trying to get involved in town government in any way. Um, so I really don't have any experience there. It's really just sort of my kind of ability to crunch numbers and work with budgets and, you know, my sort of program management background. Um, so there'll be a lot of learning that I would have to do. Okay. Well, yeah, you're going to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to start somewhere, right? So. <laughs> uh, are you married? Children in school? Yep. How many? Two. Two. Good. Yeah, one's in, uh, just started kindergarten, the other one just started. Oh, right at the beginning. Right at the very start. So, yeah. so I'm invested. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You said kindergarten in first grade? Uh, kindergarten in fifth grade. Fifth grade. Yes. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, it's a commitment for, for this board. Are you ready to make a commitment? We need, uh, that's why it's a seven member board. <clears throat> Not everyone can make every meeting. Yep. But for instance, tonight, because we were limited to only five, one, one guy, one person could make it, which is fine. But as you can see, there's four of us. Saying yeah, I voted on one. Yeah, yeah. It's usually the discretion to the chairman to, to vote. Usually they, they don't unless there's a tie. Yep. So as you can see, uh, the importance of having a full board and, and members present. And sometimes it's still kind of early, but sometimes we can go to 11, 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just making a statement so that. Yep. No, you, I mean, not, uh, not to sugarcoat anything. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, so, you know, one, I guess one of my, my downfalls is when I commit to something, right? You know, I, I, I commit, right? So uh, mm -hmm. I attend town meetings. I've been attending the board of selectmen meetings. Um, I've been attending most of the FinCon meetings. There hasn't been a ton, um, but uh, I've been attending all of those types of meetings uh, for a while now. Um, I understand how long they go, and you know, <laughs> once the wife is officially taking charge of putting kids to bed, uh, I am free for the rest of the night. <laughs> what, what, what was what was your opinion about how tonight went? I mean, this is my first meeting uh, in public live. I just, what did you think yeah. of how everything went down tonight? Like, was, yeah, what was your impression? I'm just curious to know. Yeah, no, I mean it's a good back and forth, and uh, actually the conversation and where I think you know 
some of the members are trying to look out for the betterment of the townspeople. There's there's a lot of this gives me comfort to see the the back and forth of, of, of the push and pull. Um, there has to be tension. If there's not tension, nobody's trying hard enough. Right. Um, I've always said that if none of my team members are disappointed or angry at me, then I'm not pushing them hard enough. Right. Um, so we should be pushing ourselves to do what we think is the best. And the the wanting to collect data to make data driven decisions. I mean, that's my biggest. That's my biggest thing, right? Uh, if any of you are on Facebook, you've probably seen me asking for data regarding some of the school budgeting uh, details, right? Um, and the people who are pushing for the NOVA, right? There are opinions out there that I try to get to the bottom to of saying, what is the information you have that proves your opinion, right? Everybody's willing to have an opinion and that's fine, but what is the data backing that up? And I'm a very data driven, especially living in an engineering technology world. If I don't have the data to back up all of my decisions, which could cost my company millions or billions of dollars, then that's a problem. Um, so that's where you need to set opinions aside and look to look for the data uh, and let that drive where we go. Full disclosure, I mean, <laughs> You know, I know Mike, and, and I didn't know he lived in Menden. So when I, I left for was four years ago, but uh, I think we got acquainted. You were just becoming a program manager. Yeah, I entered as a, uh, I entered as a program manager. Oh, so, you did? Okay. Yeah, we crossed paths, but not. not yeah, so he came into my <laughs> office, and you know, I, I managed some supporting groups that I budgeted some resources for, it, and he came into my office, and he, he's the new program manager, or he's going to be and started questioning me on things. And quite frankly, for all these programs coming down to supporting groups, I didn't spend much time on budgeting. I, I basically did small, medium, and large projects, put a bunch of hours for each group. Right. And uh, Mike was one of the few people, if not very few, that would come into my office and question the hours. And uh, I, I respected him immediately for that. We saw that, you know, some, some managers that guys a pain in the ass, but you know, that's that's his job. And not many program managers did that, or if any. So I always respect it. Mm -hmm. I, I would definitely endorse you. Thank you. And we're not friends by any means, you know. I didn't yeah. even we basically spoke a few times in the hall, both, yeah. and then he, I didn't even know he lived in, in, in Mendon, so it's not worth it. I never knew. Well, I uh I think it's only fair that each member <clears throat> tells Mike a little bit about ourselves. Yeah, and he knows who we yeah, so who, who, who's coming to work. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I agree. Would you like to start, Mike? Uh, I do. Would you like to start? Are there enough room for more mics? Let me give you the abbreviated mic. Mike, Mike, Mike. Yeah, you have, you have I'll make it simple. Uh, I've sat on this board for over 20 years. With a break in the middle, I served as a selectman for nine years. 35 years on the conservation commission, etc. I moved in, I've been living in town 36 years. So, like you, when you came to town, this is where I'm spending the rest of my life you get involved and you help out with the community um, for a living I'm a construction superintendent the employer that I'm, i work for i've been with 30 years I'm superintendent and i run million dollar jobs to 50 million dollar jobs and i take care of budget <coughs> safety ordering departments Keeping the client happy, usually our specialty is sewer treatment plants and water treatment plants, etc. So I also have a background in managing money, et cetera, et cetera. And I didn't have any municipal experience until I was demanding and got my own. I'm Mike Jones. I moved in the in 2013. Working for my family's business, I got out of high school. I took over day to day operations in late 1997 and run the business and now own the business. Um, I 
basically deal with all the different types of things that you do budget, <laughs> money, payroll, people, problems, contracts, projects, all runs through me at the company. Um, and basically, I got to a point in my career where I was good. This was always something I was interested in doing. And in the last year or so, I got involved in town government. This is something I'm very interested in, and this is something I'm moving forward with. I'm excited to be doing it. So that's kind of wrong. No, I work at Bose. Yeah, I do. <laughs> 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 Great, Great I work at Bose. Great <laughs> <laughs> I moved to Menden uh, a little over 10 years ago. And uh, the first year I, I moved to Menden, my taxes went through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to the assessor's office, you know, and uh, you know, I was from Haverhill, 80,000 people, right? And she sat me down and printed out the sheet and spent like an hour with me. And she went through why my taxes were there. That's true. Yeah, she had the data, like you said. And I said, yeah, I should probably get involved in a small town and make a difference. So I'd never done anything in you know, public. It is part of my other motivation is like keep watching my bill go like this. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. right. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, she had good answers and I, I respected that as well. So that's, but it's, it's a lovely town, obviously. I'm, I'm pretty much retired now. Yeah. I should have a lot more time. I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Nick Ciantra. I, uh, I've been in town for 23, 24 years. I have two kids like you. They're not in school anymore. <laughs> On their own, which is great. Yeah. Uh, um, I work in Boston. I work for Liberty Mutual. Okay. Um, I'm head of the corporate communications group. Uh, and I've been on the board for three or four years now. I've enjoyed the uh, the helping out the town. My kids play baseball and all that stuff, and it's nice now that I have them. A little bit more time, not as much time as our, our chair, our co-chair, but I'm happy to be here. And I, I think you know you've seen tonight. I think a, a good meeting of healthy kind of conversation around uh, the budget and spending money. And I think um, as a collective board and with here tonight, I think with the select board is, you know, it's, it's good that we're able to have a kind of conversation and dialogue around around spending the town people's money, but in a constructive way that's respectful for everybody. And I think that's, um, I think as a board, we try to have those types of conversations where we're able to express our opinions, but in a respectful way so that people feel that they're all heard and that we take a, a vote and it's a very democratic process. Yeah, and then that's something that I need to do as you know, part of my everyday job with my teams, right? If I'm not managing those teams in that way, right? It gets very touchy and you know, you need to be able to, there are a lot of problems I've worked, worked my teams through and um, you know, that's, that's not easy, um, just from a personal thing, right? Um, so, yeah. We'll say that there's more, and then in business, you'll find more passion on the You see, I think I am an unhinged thing. But the, it, it doesn't, it's never meant a disrespect or mean towards anybody. Just sometimes you get so worked up on something that you spend time on, and then you come and you think you've got all the answers, and I didn't have all the answers, right? So, and, the, and that's frustrating from, from, from a standpoint of myself that, that yeah, now we'll be able to get those answers. But, there's going to become those times, even with data and everything that you have, that here in your community, passion does take over sometimes. And it's not just, it doesn't, sometimes it's not just about data. So just keep that. Oh, no, absolutely. There's a lot of pieces to that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I respect the fact that you're looking out for the people of the town that are reaching out for you that voted for you, right? So they wanted you in this position and you're, that's part of your job. So yeah, I completely expect that. Thank you. Um, and there are, you know, that is something I need to deal with too, right? Because I need to make a lot of decisions that a lot of people don't agree with, that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. I'm an engineer, the data says I have to do this. I said, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> um, and I take everything else into account, right? And not all of it is also data driven. Yeah. Uh, we need to make some other decision, right? And I need to be able to help work those people through those things or, work with them to figure out why I'm continuing to be wrong, right? And uh, I have no problem saying I don't know. I have no problem saying I was wrong. 
I have no problem saying uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Let's take this offline and give me a little information session so that I can help learn, right? Uh, because I'm a mechanical engineer, and when <laughs> those software guys or those electrical guys start going crazy on me and jibber jabbing on, on stuff, there are plenty of things that just fly over my head, and there's going to be a lot of that here. Um, for me, from a municipality perspective, and I'll be looking forward to learning from folks that are willing to talk. This place is the greatest first place to start for the day to, for anything you want to do in town because you're going to touch every single board, every every facet of everything that comes through here. So you get to learn. The, this is a huge learning experience, and that's why I want to become a program manager because in product development, I now touch everything. I'm not just doing the one little thing, right? And, that's what I enjoy is the end to end every. Let's not overlook our code secretary. Mike's away. My name is Jim Gavin, and Mike, you should probably know that someone. <laughs> so I so he's in trouble for tonight because he's now in the vice chairman. Oh, he's going to get him. <laughs> Sorry to mention that. Thanks. Anyway, I, um, I'm employed full time at the Norfolk Police Department okay, as the assistant to the chief. I'm um, part of um, managing the $6 million police budget. I've been on the Finance Committee since the year 2000. I was a member until 2007 when it was decided that they needed a reporting. So I stepped off the board and I am not a member. I'm only the reporting partner. I keep track of that thing. It's pretty much. Well, thank you for everything you do because that's how we need to My records, so you know, are to the point I have as much information as I can possibly get on a piece of paper. And um, I keep meticulous files. If you ever need to know something about anything from back to 2000, <laughs> you can call me. Because I have. Sounds good. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for Mike while we're having him? I can't recall the protocol that we did when we were on meeting. Is it something that we vote on now or is this something? Well, I think I think we recommend to make a recommendation. Make a recommendation to the board of selectmen to consider them for to a favorable position. It's it's the selectmen do the appointing. We have the courtesy of interviewing. And making again making a recommendation to the board so I can be the appointing authority. This board does not set policy. What we do is we analyze money issues and make recommendations. Yes. I think if we, we get a motion on that. Right. Well, I'll make a motion that uh, we recommend Mike uh, to the board to to the board of election to be considered to uh, fill one of the vacant seats we have. Mm -hmm. well, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Oh. Thank you. Sorry, it took, sorry, it took so long. Yeah, <laughs> and that's okay. Hey, we don't we don't do much in the summer. Now we have yeah. Three <laughs> months in my oh, this is a good meeting to have had. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. Yeah, this is good. This is an interesting one. Actually, so before we adjourn, I just had a uh, idea, comment, and I don't want anybody to take it the wrong way or anything. Uh, you know, when I started on the finance committee, it was Rick Schofield headed it. We didn't have a town administrator. So the finance right. committee got heavily involved in that spreadsheet, had their, all the departments come, and it was a lot more involved. Let's put that way. Absolutely. Uh, the last year or so, to me, and this is my opinion, don't, don't take me wrong. Uh, it seems like we're just rubber stamping stuff that's already been not approved, but discussed. And, and we have very little input. Well, and I, I would actually, for more transparency, you know, I would like to see a lot of those discussions between the administrator or the select board, or whoever it is, in, in a public forum and have the public be able to view those discussions in a more transparent way. That's this, is it this is my opinion. This is my opinion. I also, I, I, I agree 100% with you, and that's been my uh, bone contention 
for a few years, not to blame any previous chairman or previous no, members no, no, or anything. It just evolved. It evolved. it evolved into basically that's why I made that statement that we're not here to rubber stamp. You know, and I'm I didn't spend all the time I spent to be a rubber stamp. I care about the town, as you heard from each one of us, that's why we're here. We care about the town. As you can see, things tend to go a little off direction. I think it, you saying that is definitely uh, probably a mutual agreement, and we're going to work to get that back to the way it used to be back when it's, it's, sort of, it's really just an annual, the annual town budget. It seems like you know we should be more involved. Absolutely. So yeah. So I would say this past year, I think COVID probably helped. Sure. Right. Not, and again, trust me. Do I think COVID was the yeah. that killed everything? And not back by any stretch of the imagination. Um, if anything, I was still trying to push for meetings to be in person. Right. And, uh, yeah. But the I think this past year definitely it seemed like it was. It, I think it was. I feel like it was because mainly there wasn't that in-person meeting. I, I don't know how you guys handled your meetings prior to Mike being elected for that last day. I mean, so I, I, I wasn't paying much attention to the causes, but I see. But I do know, for instance, the meeting when we were discussing this special town meeting, we went through all these articles, and there was the discussion of the board select meeting that was open to the public and and uh, we did a hybrid thing. So I. When you just mentioned that, that, that there's more transparency from us. So I'm talking specifically about the budget. You know, the preparation of the budget. We have the last few years no, almost. It's over the last few years. Okay. Right. Right. Zero. The, the numbers have been handed to us. This is what it says. Yes. And there's the information. And, and, I got thinking about this. We had some folks over for Halloween that, you know, their kids folks, that, not their friends with them, but they mentioned the $300,000 out of the finance committee. Well, you know, it was, you know, it was, you know what I mean? It was just, if, I don't mind taking the blame, but if I didn't have any right point into it. If I make a mistake, I'll own up to it. But right. I'm certainly not, not happy. Not, I bit my lip and it's like, what yeah, exactly. Happened? It's like, it did, it did. Exactly. And they didn't know I was on the planet. So it's like, just do those. And one of the couple of people from Update, but they knew about it too. And it's just like, you know, it's everybody like, knows about that. Right. Everybody yeah. knows about that. <laughs> And I don't even know the details, and I don't really care at this point. But I would just, I, I think we have a lot of value, and I think that, you know, mm -hmm. seven people. So what's the so what's the consensus though? What's on the street? That what what the problem is? I, I don't want to get into that. I, I'd rather, no. rather keep on the topic of, of improving maybe the process. No, no, I, I understand. But but if they think that we were just hiding that money. That's a little frustrating because it wasn't true. So that's why I asked. I don't, I don't think it's purposefully hiding money. Yeah. I think it's more of a how does this just fall through the cracks? Right. Okay, so I'm going to touch on it because it's been brought up. Those numbers were wrong on every sheet that everybody looked at, right in this book right here. Yeah, but we had a, print, we had a printout. I've never been able to have access to it other than that spreadsheet. Well, well, it doesn't matter. The numbers on the printout were wrong. Yeah, but you can't look at the formulas now, where it's. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying you would have caught it had you looked in that multiple. Uh, if I'm responsible for a spreadsheet, I'm going to check. It. Look, look, I, I'm not saying you would. I'm not saying I would, but I think seven people together. I'm not saying you would. Right. But I mean, the assessor who gave the numbers yep. overlooked it on that on the line item where that line item is there that shows you where the income is that's on that's in this book. It's not that, right. again, the number's wrong in the book. So everybody missed it. Right. So, so I guess one I shouldn't really. That's well, how I developed my thinking about. I think we want right. to more about. You know what I mean? It wasn't really. I'm not discouraging against what you're saying. You guys should have way more in the budget. In the budget. In the budget. Otherwise, we have a lot of time. We had a lot of involvement. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, that's like since that's happened. Like how how has policy or the planning changed to to do so? Essentially, we, we have to essentially we're getting rid of the spreadsheet. Right? So mm -hmm. we've got we've got new town. We've got new financial software that has the budgeting piece built in. Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all built into the software. Yeah, but it's still it's still a tool. It's not that tool causes a problem. Well, right. So again, from, from my angle, so like, how do you suggest we fix the root? What's the root cause of the problem? I don't really know what the root cause of the problem. 
It was a, it's not the spreadsheet, it's not the root cause, I know that. What's that? The spreadsheet is, no tool is the root cause of a real problem. It's not the tool of the problem. Well, I understand, but the discrepancy on the spreadsheet was the spreadsheet. Yeah, the question is who should have caught that? Right? Well, I mean, it's there's something wrong with one cell or something. I don't know. There is something there in the process where there doesn't appear to be the right <laughs> checks and balances to catch that. Like, I, if if those numbers went through as many departments as they did and were checked and balanced through a proper process, mm -hmm. should those have been caught? I don't know what the process is, so I can't comment in any way, shape, or form. But to me, there should have been a process that added everything up and checked everything over and not just the, the fact yes. that we're using only Excel and it's like pure form for that much money that blows my mind. Right. Um, so yeah. I'm so very surprised to see yeah, that I'm happy here that we're moving on to a, a proper accounting software. Right. Right. It was developed by a former private by Richard that, that, was right. a, 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 that built the whole thing and one cell that screwed up and didn't carry over the correct uh, uh, yep. income number, which didn't show correctly. So what we had on there for income was last year's income. I said, yep. yep. No, I've, I've, I've followed what I've been told the, the, the steps were. Okay. What I don't, what I personally don't know is the checks and balances across the way of who is reviewing those spreadsheets, <clears throat> who's checking them to make sure that they were no, correct. Right. They were like, the, the, the spreadsheet was the gone. Right. Certainly the finance committee, the spreadsheet was fired. But, but that's okay, but that's, but that's not 100% true because the chairman had full control of that spreadsheet. Whether he did, whether or not, yeah, okay, maybe he did. We, we okay. just, and, and it was, and it went on every email that went out with that, spreadsheet, and that's another thing, right? It shouldn't be emailed 16 freaking revisions of it. There should be one copy that everybody can read from that maybe one person writes to right. whatever. Right. Uh, which we, because we're now we're not going to have the software in time because they've delayed us because of staffing shortages. Till so we're so we are going to get one more year <laughs> with the spreadsheet. Okay. However, we're not going to screw up this year. I promise. <laughs> well, well, so I mean, it, yeah, I guess. I mean, with cloud storage and everything, there's no reason for anything to ever be right. you know, individually emailed. Right. So, I, well, again, yeah. but. My Google, Google Drive is we're, so. we're just getting to this. And, 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 so, and, 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 so, and again, not to point fingers whose fault it was. Right. In my line of work, people make mistakes all the time. You don't dwell on who made the mistake. You find out how it got made and what you do to avoid making a mistake again. Yeah. It's a spreadsheet. One one part of the solution. Right. So be, part of, be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. well. One part of the solution is: Do you know the actual procedures to put this town's budget together? If none of us were here, could you take six guys, six people, and say, "Hey, we're gonna"? Do you know what information you need? Do you know what information to ask for? No. Not written down anymore. Okay. I I've been on this committee for a long, long time. I can't tell you each step it takes. So the first thing that should be done is to have a standard sheet of this is how it's done. Gather the information. Gather from this this Freedom. protocol. Right. You follow each step like at work. Quality control, bang, bang, bang. Okay, you can now pull that concrete because I checked the forms are in the right place. This is in the right place. The correct mix, design mix. I'm sure you do this too. Oh, you follow what you have processes. <laughs> so <laughs> I think the first thing <laughs> that that's <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. I'm so saying the new guy should. Be. Yeah, he's <laughs> <laughs> he works at Bose, he's in all the process. Absolutely. <laughs> he can get over there. Get involved <laughs> because that's his expertise. Is okay, let's get a, a hard list of what we do. Yeah. And, and what it? We used to start the budget process in September. Now, the last couple of years, we don't meet until December and talk about it. 
It's a long, it's a long process to do it. Like you said, to get all the information. Okay, conservation commission, come up here. Why do you need ten grand more in your expense budget? Why, why are we not starting the budget process? So, you know what? Do you have any? Because I don't. I don't because what was that one? Yeah. Well, why are we not starting the budget process? Because I know, for instance, the municipal, the other municipalities I work for are already right. They're starting their budget season. Well, granted, it's November, but they meet next week to start with their you know, the the library is going to meet with the I'm meeting with the, the selectman or the right. we, we, we used to start right after Labor Day. Oh to we get used to set up the dates. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we started we set up the budget, we set up the dates, we made the appointments with all the departments for when they were coming in. That's all in Kim's hands now. Right. So we can probably change it. So I'm wondering I'm wondering should my perception is Kim meets with all the partners way ahead of us. And then when we get the final spreadsheet, that's what happens now. It's already but it's, it wasn't away. that way before. Right, right. So and I would she, like to think it, right. And so but if that's we're asking her for information that only the people that she talked to can give us. Right. Because she's not asking the question. No, no, but the people yeah. should still come here. They should yeah, be. I, I, yeah. I agree. They some would have too, but it's already like the last few years. I mean, Kim's yeah. I mean, job is to be able to interface with those people and be that day to day person, right? So right. it's right. one of those things. It, it is her job, right? right. But, yeah. but whether or not the number is already agreed upon, I mean, hell, the number's well, already agreed upon. Doesn't that? I'm just. But, but the problem is, so, what's the, so, <laughs> So Kim, Kim is one person meeting with each department, right? She can have biases and favoritism. I'm just saying that's how the townspeople, I can look at it like that, right? One person meeting with each department and developing this budget. She's developing her own budget. She's the town manager. I know. What she's supposed to do. What I'm saying she is we did it in more of an open forum with right. more people. There's a weapon. Does everybody have a bias? I have a bias. I have a bias. Let me ask you a question. We can say that we can have... On open forum, we can say we can have more transparency and keep throwing these, these buzzwords around that everybody throws around all the time. Nobody attends these meetings ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> We've been doing this for long. Yeah, no, no, no. The, the only time we would see a half a decent crowd was on the night that we would discuss the, the budget for the annual the one the final the final run through was the only time we would see a decent group of people. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. When, we were, when yeah, we were setting so. up the budget, we used to have the people who were going to be on the discussion oh, yeah. that night, they would be here. Alan would be here yeah. if he had comments or questions about oh, somebody I'm else's. I'm talking about, you're talking about transparency with, with the residents. Yeah, I mean, just because they don't come doesn't mean you shouldn't be transparent. That's my more as much as we can because the more we're transparent the more people well, we, might come um, right, so feel like things aren't being done which, what's not transparent though i'm confused time out for a second we, yeah. we have kim who works for the town as a liaison to these departments we have us that are you know, appointed positions to review the information on behalf of the town from elected officials doesn't it seem to be that it needs to mesh into a combination of both and the sense is like these warrants get put together mm -hmm. and then we go through it and we have a list of questions and then we have just like this meeting tonight. I have five or six different things right here. I can't have the last time I can read it, but I'm going to follow back up on for additional information. I want to ask you guys if you want to have a meeting next Tuesday or Wednesday and see what your thought process is going on that and try to get these people in here to get these questions answered. So why why is it a combination of both? And that's Kim is a tool, like we should use so it. So no problem. Warrants are fine. It's the budget. You haven't gone through the budget. Well, no, I mean, I mean, are we not creating the budget here? So I'm saying, no, no, no. I'm saying we're using other. So she doesn't have all the. So I, no, I, I, I guess. I, I guess let's you know hear me at all, one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm gonna. I, I mean, I just said that's how it feels. I mean, no, no, you feel like I, 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 I agree 100. Well, that's good. I don't know what the answer. is. I don't think it's to everything out open. No, no, I actually need it, but I know we have it. There's no reason not to. I'm just wondering where Thursday night or Tuesday night. So when Kim meets with the departments, yeah. why isn't it here with us? If she first meets with the departments, then it's over the button. It used to be that way. 
So he used to not be the town administrator. Well, yeah, no, no, I, no the, the, it was slightly different though, Gene. The, the people used to just come here. Because what we had was really, we never had a, a <clears throat> we had like a town administrator. Like there was just somebody that, she, you guys built the budget. Right, right. Well, we don't do that. Anymore. Town administrator used to tell the people, town clerk, you're on the budget for tonight discussion. Come to the meeting. Town, we would have three or four. We'd have the town clerk, the water board, council on aging. We will take them in tonight. They're all going to sit in that audience and they're going to come up here and explain to us their whole budget. So and they did. Yeah, you know, and, I get that. and I think they should. I, and then we have I'm all not saying they should. Yes. But I think this should initially the first got involved. I think then, then there's going to be a lot of them coming. They were. They were. Like, so so last year, I felt I had no value to the budget. None. Okay. None. I, I, that was really that was was I just don't feel there was any value to me being here. Okay. Yeah. And again, if, if there's going to be a way to fix it, then, then let's let's fix it. I mean, oh yeah. But I, I think too that Kim meets a, a lot more with the department so during the week and, and, and is and is developing the numbers for the budget, seeing how it's coming through, and saying that hey, look. We know we're only going to have this much. So, what for you guys should still not just be saying, okay, we've met with Kim and the budget looks good because it's a balanced budget. And, and, and again, I think you're going to say that it's a fine line between how much you can. Right. But at the same time, even if she's meeting with them, we need to start sooner. We need to start the budget process sooner because what you're trying to do is, is it then becomes that miles down your down your throat too when you're trying to jam everybody into three nights you know and, and then it snows and then so you know. so again that's why i said it, it's a commitment how we did it years ago was in september we got together and the members would say okay what's the best night that we meet and we're gonna start by meeting every other week Every other week, every other Tuesday. My mom, yeah. absolutely. And that started and, in September. Mm -hmm. and it started right after late, right after Labor Day. Right yeah. after Labor Day, we set it up. So it was over. Because we you got we had to get ready for the special town meeting that yeah. happens in November. <laughs> we'd be talking about okay, free cash, and we'd be going again. We'd be going okay. It's September. What's free cash look like? And <laughs> some people would say, well, we, it's not certified yet. What are the numbers you're turning into? You know, yeah, what right. are the numbers you're turning Let's into? Give us an idea. So don't say you don't know. You know, and it, it, and at the time, the finance committee commanded a lot of respect. You wouldn't get, oh, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Are you doing your job? These numbers got to be at the state such such a time. Why aren't we getting those numbers too? Yeah. To check. And I, 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 we established we established that the finance committee to like the line of our right. right. That's what that's what we would do. That's what we charge to do. I, I kind of probably fall somewhere in between where I think you know we have Kim here. We're paying her for her job to interface with the departments, and she should be kind of putting that first. My opinion, she should be putting the first draft and. Each of those departments should be coming to the FinCom with all the detail as to what those dollars are. And we have the opportunity to push back, question, and to the point before anything kind of gets really down on ink, that we're able to have that level, to my point, to your point, level of transparency as to what the departments want. That's yeah, probably um, the middle ground. You, you know, I and, know, and, 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 uh, history. I mean, uh, tradition. And this is yeah. where this is where they should come to, to discuss yeah. it with you. I mean, you guys have to make the decision on the floor to make the motion and make the financial right. decision for the arts um, and uh, whether it be special topic. Or topic. And and I think that you're you're right that. And, and again, I'm sorry that you guys feel that way, felt that way. I didn't realize it was that bad because I, I don't, again, this is why we don't have 
people that volunteer because you get discouraged and you walk away. And I don't, I don't want to see that because right. I get discouraged and I don't want to be a celebrity anymore sometimes. <laughs> and and, and I, but I say you can't walk away, right? So right. if anything, I would want to work to help make you guys yeah. make it better. So I guess I think I think you had a good point. I think if we started earlier, maybe in having the towns representatives come, which sometimes they don't even come, they don't come prepared many times, right? With the information we need. Right. And then it just gets shoved off, we rubber stamp it, we go to town meeting. We're just trying to do the due diligence to understand right. what the expenditures are. And like nine times out of ten, they're completely valid. The town needs oh, yeah. it. I mean, there's no, you know, people aren't trying to run fast ones. It's just we need transparency to what we're spending because that's what we're here to do. So I guess if we met a little bit earlier and off more a little more often, they would be more prepared. Right. And mm -hmm. and I think just personally as a board and if that information isn't presented, we, we, we need, in my opinion, we need to pass over those articles until people come in and explain it. Sorry, right. use the point line items for the budget. Yeah, yeah. It, like I'm not I'm not voting no on it because I don't know the information, so I can't say yes or no. Right, because on the town meeting floor, when a resident gets up and asks a question, why we why we okayed it, and we give the deer in the headlight book. I don't know about any of you guys, but. Yeah, I don't do that at work. I certainly don't do it when my wife asks me questions. <laughs> oh, if I don't have an answer. You're going to have it tonight. You <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. likes to be put in that position. Right. There are no Right. So I, mean, I think, to Mike, I think if we get to the town to talk about much earlier, that would give us time for them to get their information to come back again. Where the years passed, they, it's just no time. Well, again, you guys, the SIGCOM used to set up the schedule for the budget. Right. Right. And you guys see you know, a ton of equipment. It's just something that we get together and put together like a thin calm calendar yes. that says these are the things. I have lost. I can't guide you because I, I don't have this experience. No, sure, yeah. I'll no. organize it, but like, sure, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but but that's besides the point. Just every, yeah. every, one of us, every one of us here started as a newbie. Right. <laughs> so, don't worry about it. No, I just, I say, just say, I just said, I don't know what we gotta do. No, I appreciate that. And I appreciate what, all that. Yeah, what we got, we got to do is, again, let's, is let's leave here tonight knowing that we're going to meet, make a decision when we're going to meet again to start the procedure. Oh, this is how we're going to run. Or at least this, this year and going forward. I think, I think it probably warrants a conversation with myself and Kim tomorrow as well. Yeah. That we need, we need to get out there, but the budget process needs to start soon. Like right now, is the, is, where are we in the budget process? I have no idea. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we might not be anywhere. We might not be well into it. Well, we might be like, well, that's my point. Yeah, no idea. I don't know. Whether it's not, whether it's not budget to do again. Well, let's do my annual town meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do the last week of April. So, oh, you know sorry. something? It goes to print in that book the last week of the last week of the day. You know what? I'm thinking it might have been in his palace, so I don't know what their annual town meetings are. They could be right. still mm -hmm. way different skew. Um, so, but I think that, yeah, let, let me have a conversation with Kim tomorrow, too. Um, right. And which, let's find out where we are and let's get on that level. Let's get that level playing field started right now so that we're doing it this year. So they don't think they won't Yes, I think so we want to take the time to meet with each department at least twice so they had a chance to come back again to bring the information because generally when they come, they don't know what we're going to ask. They don't have the information because they don't know what they need sometimes or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. They don't know the questions. They can't foresee the questions. When it's not exactly. And we can't force. We it, can't also be the first, it also shouldn't be the first time you see it. Like, I can't, I can't formulate the questions that I'm going to have if someone just well, you know, yeah. says something and then walks out the door. Right. And right. And I, I, we get the print out the day that. Right. right. And you, you, need a, you need a degree of right. time to absorb what you see. So you have a good understanding. Why is this line in for X, Y, You send the pre-read out a week before they exactly right. see it. And then they, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I think we need to set that. No, we need to be just the agenda to be just exactly this. Formulate exactly what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. So it's just, it's like simple. Right. So yeah, the departments will appreciate that they'll know exactly what they're expecting when they're going to have to come in. You know, they're, they're more <laughs> <laughs> if they don't come in, <laughs> careful, careful with the optimism. No, yeah, if the department that comes in, zero. Sorry, <laughs> don't come in the next time. I mean, you're going to find that you're not going to see any police out on the streets. Excuse me. <laughs>
But also half the half the half the I'm not gonna come in and they're just level <laughs> their level budgets or right. mostly went up a little bit or they needed some more paper or something like that. Other than that though, so a level budget to me is well how can you reduce it? Well it's it doesn't mean you have to add it in here, right? No. Some line items should be reduced. Right. And, and that's what we used to do. Hey, you didn't spend you didn't spend this money in that line and why didn't you? Yeah. Why are you asking for it again? It was the anomaly this year. Yeah. Which is <laughs> like then so right. So to avoid that question, yep. they'll just buy six boxes of paper at the end of the year and make sure yeah. it's spent. And, 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 and I'm not being sarcastic about it, I'm just saying that's the yeah. I, I mean, I know, I'm it. It's not work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. but at least we should be asking the question. Right. You never budget too low. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. They're going to hold it to that next year. Right? Right? Nothing wrong asking. We reduce your budget. That's what next year. So, yeah. uh, when should we meet again? Well, I have these items here. Like, I think it's okay. I'm going to Cancun this week. You're not sitting on the town meeting. Okay. Okay. I, I have to. Just, Check my schedule. Oh, he I loves it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I love how they just want. Maybe they just want. Maybe they just want. Maybe they just want. Now he's like, I don't want to touch it. Now it's, yeah. I get it. I get it. His I suit is hanging on the closet door. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't wear suits. I'm listening. Who's going to second all the motions at the, when are you going to get ahead of us at the, at the special comment? But, uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure. I might have another commitment in seven days. Company meeting. Yeah. Kim, who's, Kim, who's Kim, the Kim, vice vice chair? Kim did say there's something that you can try to do. You can try to do. No, I, there's, I mean, as long as somebody's there to take the motions, it's not there. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll say the meetings. So. But I think in my notes here, we want to relook at 7 and 8, which is the police uh, account. We want to reopen 12, which is the town hall campus, and have a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. We have down uh, Kinsley Land surveying information from Lonnie. So those are three things that we could get in front of before the meeting. If we want to have a meeting, we'll say Tuesday of next week. No, the meeting's on Tuesday. Tuesday of next week. So that's Tuesday right. of next week, we could meet at 6 yeah. here, as long as that doesn't conflict with any schedules here. That's not going to be able to do it. Well, please hold. Mm -hmm. Don't need to review these items again. Wait. Pull on the calendar. Yeah. This Something should is. have all the meetings. That's up to no. Sixteenth. So what, what day is it? The third. No. Eighth. Eight. Eight or nine. Today's the third. Yeah. Today's the third. So next week. That's next week. I, yeah, I don't see everything in here as far as hybrid meetings go, but we can be here. November 4th, November 8th, we have assessors, the BBT policy subcommittee. This year's November. Yeah. November 9th. Well, it's pretty wide open right now. The night. Okay, so you want me to post a meeting for the night? Yes, yeah. And, and I'll also post one for the 17th for the special. First half an hour before. Six o'clock. Well, I think she came back in the day. 6 30 then? I think 6 30. Yeah. And what time would you like it up next to Is 6 work for everybody like close to night? Mm -hmm. yeah. I personally think it's early for me. Okay, that is. I'll try to make it. I mean, I can. Make it 6 30. I mean, this wide open, so we can make it 6 30. That gives you the amount of time you need. 6 30. 6 30. Okay, 6 30. And now, uh, when, you, when you do the agenda, can you make it a hybrid meeting? Yeah. Where everyone would request that all meetings go forward. Yeah, that was on my agenda list to do. Okay. So the people can join them. Okay. And then it's something we said. Yeah, and again, I think that as well as for Sorry? Oh, I was just going to think we said a meeting now for. The following, well, I, maybe follow well, the I, think, I think let's let's put together uh, the agenda. That's that's the meaning I want to create to create the agenda. So I want to create a minute to be just how we're going to have this, and that's so going to take a while to have. Pick the next date. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, One question: the, agenda, uh, the choosing of the new members would that happen on the tenth, and would we want the meeting to include the new members? That meeting is that meeting we definitely want to include the new members, and I'm going to Cancun on the 11th, so I'm gone. So it wouldn't be till I'm back that following. So I'd like to say maybe the week of 
We don't. We're not going to select those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm just tactically thinking. Yeah. Oh, you'll, so be, thinking you'll be at this meeting. Yeah. 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 It's a special yeah. meeting. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, which one? The seventh. Yeah. I mean, the twenty third. The ninth. No, he, he, so yeah. Well, he won't be. I didn't know. It won't be. It won't be an appointment by the ninth because we don't appoint till the tenth. Okay. So, 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 like, so, so you know, my, my question is that we were talking about having a meeting next week. Would we want that to be on the eleventh because then the appointments can happen on oh, the ninth. As far as the appointments can happen on the tenth, and then we can have the full board. Of the when do you leave? I leave on the eleventh. I'll do the ninth. Oh, I see. So you want to push it to the tenth? Um, well, again, on the ninth, we'll be doing. Who's ever appointed on the tenth? Won't be able to make it. Ha, has yeah. had to get sworn in. Yeah, you, you, you're not. Yeah. Well, so. But you can come to the meeting anyway. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. just like yeah. the vote. It would be more convenient for me to definitely do it on Tuesday before the meeting, so I yeah. put a window of time. Yeah. But I think if we had the full board on the meeting on the twenty, it might last. Or chat third. If we do, if we do a meeting on the twenty third to review all of our policies and agendas and how we want to pass and, and set. Continuing dates and get them on the calendar. So that's what we'll do with the 20th. We have all that. We'll build a calendar, we'll build a plan of attack, and okay, what let I'm me ask you this. Yeah. What do you want on the agenda for the night? The, on the ninth, that's going to be items that we have held open. So it'll be Article 7, Review. 8. All right, so I won't list the article numbers. Yep. I'll just yes. say review yeah. special yeah. town meeting. Yeah, so the four articles. Yeah. Finish reviewing. Yeah, yeah. finish yeah. reviewing. Oh, that's all I really have to that. Unless anybody has anything to add. Are you talking about? Do you, well, do you want to build a calendar then? No, we, that's just. Do we think we'll have calendar? We can we can discuss it further. Let's discuss it further, and then, then we kind of pull it all together. I'd like to have all the members though present for that. So yep. it's oh, right. everybody's input. You know, okay. we can spitball some things. Kick it around. Okay. That makes sense, everybody. <laughs> then I'm gonna I'm gonna get a um because everything's moving to the cloud now anyway. So we're gonna I'll get a uh, FinCom area set up for you guys to put documents. We can move all your minutes in there. Um, everybody will have access to it we as well as. Them, well, you'll still have to send him the poll. Well, no, he'll be able to pull them out of the poll, um, and then. Um, you all will also get you a, cal a calendar. So the Pincom group will have its own calendar. So you can put, thing, put your items in there right. and then you can invite, you can essentially send invites out to, to the highway department if you're going to have a meeting. And then we'll have the team's meeting actually, uh, sorry, the, the links will be in there as well as on the agendas that we post. So that if, again, I use the highway department's uh, freshman head. Valen wants to jump in, he can right. jump in this way to answer the questions rather than you know, sometimes it's nice to sit at the couch and wait for you guys to start asking questions. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, that's that's how we used it. Right. Yeah. We'd have enough meetings to say, well, we got to talk about the highway. This. Well, he's not here. The director, the uh, recording secretary, contact Alan. Asking to be at our next meeting. No, this is yet. Yeah, this is that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. and, and we set it up. We set it up. Right now, we're being told what we got to dictate how we're going to do it. Because sure. that's our job. Yeah, that's right. It's in black and white. I don't think it's putting anybody out to come up for an hour to talk about what they're asking for. Not if you're the head of the department no. and making $100,000 a year. When my bosses say, Mike, you got to come up to Plastow for a meeting. Ooh, I don't go, well, I, 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 I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That's what we can do from your couch now, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not that hard. So, we need to. Uh, uh, basically, it's I like think. It's like 10 years. I'm going to make a motion to. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Any nays? Meeting adjourned.